parts to it than you can imagine, Jack. Well, you'll see a lot of free substitution. We mentioned that. Elvis Satelli at the left outside linebacker. He's a big play man. Anatui Asasopo, one of the down linemen, along with Jack Sims. And Colin Scott's from Australia. M.L. Johnson, the right outside linebacker for the University of Hawaii. Inside linebackers, Anthony Woodson and James Elias. They're also very quick and mobile. And the defensive backfield, more quickness and mobility. Brian Norwood, Rich Miano, the all-whack, strong safety, Kirk Kofensis, and Fred Hemphill. Robert Smith was a question mark coming into this ball game with a bad shoulder, but he is back deep to receive along with Kerry Burt for the Iowa Hawkeyes and kicking off for Hawaii. It will be Rich Spellman, who's been around for a long time, another senior on this club. He's another all whack performer. Spellman gets into it. It will sail deep into the end zone, and Iowa will start out at the 20 yard line. Actually, that ball touched the end line, so they will use that rule that a lot of folks do not like whatsoever. They'll bring it out to the 30. That ball missed by about a yard of being a great kick. Well, a lot of people want to bring the run back back into the game, and uh, when you kick it out of the end zone like that, like Spellman did, that takes away that element, and that's why they put in that rule, and a lot of people don't like it. If you're concerned about the health of Chuck Long, he is about 100%. His knee is fine, this according to Chuck Long himself, and we'll see what the Iowa Hawkeyes do offensively. The lone setback is Owen Gill. He'll get the pitch, trying to left side, got a blocker out front, picks up six yards. Interesting to see the Hawkeyes go to the left. Last time out against Minnesota, everything directed to the right. Part of that reason was because of Chuck Long's knee, direction of the off offense to the right. So interesting to see the Hawks get off going left. If you had to classify the Rainbow's defense, what would be a couple of words that you would use? Uh, pursuit is the first one that would come. Gang tackling and quickness. The Hawks will go with that single setback. It is Owen Gill getting the call again. Jonathan Hayes with a crunching block cut back in. And Owen Gill looks like he has the first down. It all depends where they mark it. It should be first and 10 Iowa. That's what they want to do. They want to come out and run it down Hawaii's throat. If they can run the football, they'll keep it there. Dick Tommy said, up front, we cannot match up with Iowa's big people. And if they can block us and they run the football, they only have to throw 10 passes on the night. Uh, it's going to be a long night for the University of Hawaii. Wide to the left is Billy Happel. Tim Sennett is the up back now with Owen Gill. Back in the eye. Long count by Mr. Chuck Long. First and 10, Iowa. Gill will get his third call. He'll tuck it in and pick up maybe one. I thought that was interesting the way the University of Hawaii decided to kick off to start the game. Obviously, they felt that their defense could stop Iowa. Is Dick Tommy the kind of coach who wants his defense out on the field first to be aggressive to set the tone for the football game, or does he flip flop? Oh, very much so. He is. Uh, he will do a lot of things on defense that he won't do on offense. He's conservative offensively and uh, will have a lot of different schemes on defense. Robert Smith in the slot left. Chuck Long with a second and long. Maybe time for his first pass of the Hawaii evening. Plenty of time to throw. Pumps once. Nobody's open. He'll try the right side. Flip it up for Robert Smith. Who the football, and he gets a hit at the 40. Now they say he did not catch the football. Brian Norwood lowered the shoulder into Robert Smith. And if you're injured, that's not the kind of play you want to have on the first play of the night. And Jim Smith is down on the field. It looks like he took a real shot in that shoulder, which had been a question mark early in the game. Watch the hit here. All, all the time in the world for Long, which is something that uh, Hawaii does want to see. And there is the hit. That's the type of hitting you will see from Hawaii tonight. That is the type we've seen all season long. That can only be compared to a pedestrian walking across the street and getting hit by something other than the wind. So the Iowa Hawkeyes now are faced with their first third and long situation. I had to chuckle. One of the local sports writers referred to the Iowa quarterback as Chuck third and long in one of his articles. And it seems to have been that way for the Iowa Hawkeyes in the last three games. Their scoring offense has gone down considerably. In the last four games, they have averaged but 16 and a half points a contest. They average 26 points overall. So when you take a look at that, you know the offense has been hurting. Robert Smith is still being tended to along the sidelines. We've got a timeout on the field. No score. This is the Hawkeye Television Network. Vision Network, Chuck Long faced with a third and eight. Iowa trying to keep the football and not let Mr. Cherry get this crowd into the ball game. Long will go back, give it on the delay, throw to Gill, and he'll go down right there. 
Anthony Woodson, the linebacker, shot the gap, got an arm in there. James Elias was also in there. That was a pretty good arm tackle. Those linebackers these days are so big and strong, they only need one arm. And Gill is not an easy man to bring down. So back to punt will be Castrovalo. Hawaii will take the fair catch at the 25-yard line. 35-yard punt and no return on that. Jim. Vincent Sides was the man back. It looked like he wanted to run it back, Jack, but the ball got caught in the wind or just simply died off of Costabala's foot, and he had to come up and shoestring it. Hawaii has gone through a lot of return men this year. They've had a lot of injuries in that position in particular, and Vincent Sides, I believe, is the fourth or fifth man that they've tried at that position. So the Rainbows will get the football, and as Jack told you in his pregame show, they have won some nail biters after losing three consecutive games. They lost a very tough one to BYU, which is the number one team in the country, at least if you believe in the Prince. So Rafael Cherry brings him out. He'll give it to the deep back, and he'll get three or four yards right off the bat. So they're going to test the Iowa defense, too. If they can run at Iowa, that'll set them up for the Vets. Well, the UH's ability to run is certainly a key to this game. They're, uh, they're going without a huddle here, Jim. Paolo was the man who carried. Cherry with good play action. He's looking left. He's looking for Williams. Williams is open, but the ball is open. Check that. That was Walter Murray. Walter Murray, who had a step on his defender. And that won't be the last time we see him go for it all. Well, he's the home run man that you will see. He has sprinter speed. He was a national hurdles champion in high school. And uh, he has absolutely frightening speed. Oklahoma's uh, coach Barry Switzer last year said uh, he was perhaps the best receiver he had seen all year. Keith Hunter had the coverage on Murray. In actuality, he didn't have the coverage. So it's third and six. Cherry with the eye formation. Iowa not doing a lot of stunning. Cherry will drop straight back. Over the middle it goes. Right over his knees. the big play man on third down that they go to over the middle. They call him Money. 24 yards on the pass, and we have a fallen warrior in the backfield back at the 20-yard line. Looking pass right over the middle, and he got inside the uh, Iowa zone defense, and a nice tackle by Keith Hunter to stop the play. And from here, I can't make out who is down for the Warriors. He is being covered up by the trainers from our camera angle. When you look at the course of not only a Big Ten football season, but any college football season, it is amazing that they walk away from the season with 45 bodies, much less healthy bodies. That is Quentin Flores, a center for the Rainbows, down at the 20-yard line. 6'2", 240-pound junior, and we couldn't see exactly what befell him. KAAL and KTVO. Thank you all for joining us. And we'll mention those fine cities that make up the great state of Iowa as we go along this evening. And now we have play held up again. That last pass again for Alf Cherry to Joe Nobles. And we have yet to see Cherry scramble tonight. A couple of changes, Jim, for the Iowa defense tonight at uh, right end. Bruce Gear is in there for the Hawkeyes in place of Dave Strobel, a mysterious man tonight. And also in the linebacking core, it's George Davis has the nod over Kevin Spitzig, who was knocked up in the uh, Minnesota game. William Bell has came into the Hawaii backfield right now. He's an interesting story, only a freshman, and they really don't know what to do with him. He has so many talents. Well, he can throw the football, and uh, of course, when Cherry leaves next year, they're going to have a, a big boy, void to fill there. But he can also run with the football. He's been coming on in recent weeks. Uh, the University of Hawaii has gone through a lot of running backs this year. They lost their number one back, uh, Junior Lapati yeah, uh, early in the one. season, and uh, he was really turning into something when he was uh, had a, a knee ligament injury on a 62-yard touchdown run against Utah. After a lengthy delay, which Islanders really don't mind. They, they move at a leisurely pace over here. Two or three-minute timeouts bother the people back in the Midwest here. It's kind of just time to relax. Let's get it all straight and figure out what we're doing here, boys. Just, just take it easy. Or as they say out here, hang loose.
First and ten for the Rainbows. As Cherry looks over the Iowa defense, which has bent early. Cherry back to pass. He's going to stick it to the secondary. A little screen pass. Out on the flat it goes. Ola has the football down to the 41 yard line. He took a hit there by Keith Hunter. That is, that is a play that you will see quite often tonight. Uh, Faola is basically, and what you're hearing in the background is nu'u, nu'u from the fans. Faola is basically a straight-ahead runner, but they will swing him out into the flats and uh, set him up with the little screen. And he can take a lick. Last week against New Mexico, he got popped near the goal line, and not many people would have hung on to the football, but Faola hung on like he never got hit whatsoever. There you see Hunter bringing the runner down. Second and four is what that screen pass set up for the Rainbows. Let's go down on the field and get a quick injury report from Gary Dolphin. Gary? Well, Jim, the word on Robert Smith, he just had the wind knocked out of him. He will be back in the game. Back up to you. So Norwood only took the win. Cherry on the good play action and around the middle. Great defensive play by the Hawkeye. That's Brian Hopper. The big guy out of Mount Vernon read it well. And he's been doing that for several years for the Hawkeyes. If you have seen the Rainbows play very much, that is not an unusual play. That's in their arsenal, a loss of 12. Well, they'll run that two or three times on the evening, and I think Hayden Fry, uh, as you said, has what been watching the game field. And if you can get Walter Murray some open field, that's what you want to do with a guy like Murray is, is let him run. Frequently, he'll outrun his blockers. He is so fast. Well, he was looking for a corner, and Huffer just cut the corner right off and laid him to rest on the artificial turf here at Aloha Stadium. So third and long for the Rainbows, and you can bet Cherry will put it up. If he gets the rush, watch out for the scramble. Back he goes. Good protection. Looking for Nobles, and he can't find it. Looked like it was partially tipped. Double coverage back there. Number 29 for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Nate Creer, I believe, the man who got the hand on the football. Let's see. Cherry steps up in the pocket so nicely. And it was Creer who got his hand on the football. Craig Hartman is also in the backfield for the Iowa Hawkeyes. So now Tom McCarthy will have to kick it away for the Rainbows. McCarthy... Got a pretty healthy average off his foot, 40 and a half, and now we got movement on the rainbow line, and it looks like they'll go back five more. I think somebody moved on the left side of the rainbow line. Kicking game is one of the key points that Dick Tomey stresses. Defense and kicking game. And uh, Hawaii has always had a strong kicking game during the eight years of Dick Tomey here in Hawaii. And this year, uh, Tom McCarthy and Richard Spellman has, have provided an excellent one-two punch. McCarthy, has, in his four years, have, has never had a punt block. I think if I were a punter, I'd request that. <laughs> well, Tommy says, you got to protect your kicker. That's the rule number one Good of football. Defensive restriction. Well, they say Hawaii was not doing the movie. The moving, it was the Iowa Hawkeyes who, who entered the stadium tonight about an hour before the game. Schuster was the man accused of that five-yard violation for Iowa. When the Iowa Hawkeyes came into the stadium tonight, they had looks on their faces that were downright grim. There was not a smile among them. That's no way to walk into Aloha Stadium, huh? So back to kick again is McCarthy. Waiting for what seems like an eternity for this punt from Hawaii's Tom McCarthy. Good snap, a little high, the rush is there, but they won't get him, and this kick is up in the stratosphere. Smith will let it bounce, and that's going to be bad news for Iowa. Down at the one-yard line. Smith had no choice. If he fair catches yard it, punt. Yeah, and if he fair catches it back in the five, he'll get an ear pull from Hayden Fry on his way back to the bench. So he just hoped for an Iowa bounce, but he got a rainbow bounce instead. So now Iowa will really be confined in what they can do. They rarely come out when their back is against their own goal line and do anything special. They usually stick it to Owen Gill, unless, of course, you've got Ronnie Harmon healthy, which he is not. The give is to Owen Gill. He'll get nothing. Now, what you're liable to see from Hawaii here is a lot of gambling on defense. And if Iowa wants to 
really be tricky. They might step back there because Dick Tomey is big in the field position type of game, and uh, the University of Hawaii is about ready to throw everybody in the kitchen sink up there up front. Fred Bush was trying to throw a block on that play, but he had two people to contend with, and that's quite a chore. Bush back in the lineup. Who, he went out early in the year with a foot injury. So again, out of that wing T formation come the Iowa Hawkeyes with Senate and Bush back there. Here's play action. Chuck Long wants something long, and he's got it. Bill Happel has the football at the 28-yard line for Iowa. Big play for the Hawkeyes. They're out of trouble, and they've got a first down. Billy Happel, Mr. Hands for the Hawkeyes, throw it in his direction, and he'll get it. Hold everything. There's a flag back where it says Aloha. A gain of 21 has been negated by what looks like to be a holding call against Iowa. Might have been a reason why Chuck had so much time back there. He had plenty of time. Good play action into the line. Happel's the kind of receiver who, if you stack him up against a lot of receivers in the country, you say, what's he doing on the football field? He doesn't have all the natural qualities, but he's got good hands, he runs good routes, and he's got his head in the football game most all the time. Hawkeyes have been fortunate. They had Dave Morris, of course, last year. Now Billy Happel has stepped into Dave's shoes and done an excellent job this year. The Hawkeyes' number one receiver with 38 catches coming into tonight's ball game. Robert Smith and Happel now will come to the Iowa sideline. It is second down. Nine yards to go for an Iowa first down. In motion goes Bush. The give is to Mr. Gill. Got a hole over the left side. He'll pick his way out to about the 10-yard line. And at least for the punter's sake, that's a good position to be in. Hawks have, the uh, Hawks have flipped uh, Mike Haight over on that left side, put Herb Wester at the right tackle. They went left side that time behind Haight and Bill Glass, and a good pickup for Owen Gill. Rich Miano made the hit, and if you live in Hawaii, you know Rich Miano like you do the name Oahu. He's a walk-on, of all things, a couple of years ago, and uh, he has turned into uh, an all-Western Athletic uh, Conference performer the last two years. He looks like a slimmed-down Arnold Schwarzenegger. He has got a body for a defensive back. Hitter, too. Third down and two. The Hawkeyes on a very crucial third down early in the football game. Swinging out to Gill, who's in trouble. Gill will not make it to the 10. Ryan Norwood and... Anthony Woodson stopping Gill. And let's go down to the sidelines where Gary Dolphin is standing by. Gary? Well, Jim, a big play was that holding call a moment ago, and Kirk Ferentz, you ought to see him down here. He is absolutely incensed at the official who made the holding call, and I believe uh, Mike Hayde, if I'm not mistaken, he is really upset. Castrobala will get the ball away in his own end zone, and Vincent Sides will wait for a bounce. Flag down. This one will come back, and Iowa will have a first down. It looks like roughing the kicker. 45-yard punt by Costrabala, a return of six yards by Vincent Sides, but scratchy. Pretty good rush that time put on by the Rainbows, and I think teams know that they're going for Costrabala this season. Michigan State said they were going to go after the Hawks, and they did against the Hawkeyes a couple weeks ago. Yeah, Costrabala clearly got the punt away. Kyle Mosley. Mosley was the man who came in about a step late. That's a real tough play to make. If you've got your momentum coming in from the side, you just don't pull up. The way that play is designed, you're supposed to cut at an angle in front of him, and yet there was somebody coming in from the other side, so we couldn't do that. He wound up going into the punter. So the Iowa Hawkeyes get their first rainbow break of the evening. There's 8.04 remaining here in the first quarter, and not much shaking as far as the offenses are concerned. The Rainbows had one big pass play from Cherry, but stalled after that. Let's see what Chuck Long does with Fred Bush and Owen Gill in the backfield. Wide to the left, it is Billy Happel, Robert Smith in the slot left. Pitch and sweep. Owen Gill will pick up a pop two. Anthony Woodson, the 6'2", 225 senior linebacker from San Francisco got in there, and also James Elias. Well, you notice the pursuit there the Rainbows know of the guy the size of Gill that it's not going to be one man that's going to take him down. They're going to need two or three guys to take a tank like Gill down to the carpet. Gill, of course, is the career rushing leader for the Iowa Hawkeyes. 2,462 yards, and those last two were tough. <laughs> Second and eight. The Hawkeyes might stick it in the air. No, they'll keep it down on the ground to Bush, who will 
pay the price for that carry. James Elias again, and Elias, good athletes are in his family. His sister was an All-American volleyball player here at the University of Hawaii, and now you don't see it on your cameras yet, but the Rainbow fans are starting the wave. And of course, the joke around the stadium is, if the wave gets going strong enough, they'll drown three people from Clinton. And I've heard that joke about five times now, <laughs> at least. Third down and six for Iowa with Chuck Long in a passing situation out of the deuce backfield. Back he goes. The protection is not there. He's hit as he throws and complete. That's Alva Sotelli. That's the big man that they're looking for to, uh, to free him on the outside and take pot shots at Long. If Iowa lets Sotelli in there, then it could be a long night for Long, but that's what uh, Hawaii has to have. They have to have that good pass rush. Tough throw to make. Hit right before he threw the football. Sotelli leads his club in quarterback sacks with eight. He was only a half a step away from getting another one. Kostrabala back standing at his three. And Vincent Sides waiting at the 40. Sides should get some running room here. He's got the ball at the 42. Picks up a block at the 45. A little hole and across midfield, which is where the Rainbows will take over offensively. And Tim Sennett is shaken up. Tim Sennett is on the field and shaken up. We have no score. 6.27 remaining in the first quarter. We'll return after these words from your Lopes month. And when you don't win and you talk about injuries a lot, some people tend to get a bit upset. Rafael Cherry sets him down as the Rainbows have the football in Iowa territory. Long count. Cherry wants to put it upstairs. George Little has him by the ankle and down he goes. The big guy, George Little, and he leads the Hawks in sacks this season, and he gets after him. He gets in your grip. You better watch out. If ever a man were misnamed, it is George Little. He comes hard from the right side, gets a hold of Cherry, and he won't let go. Now, Rafael is not used to getting sacked. That's one way to negate his mobility. You can't run when you're nailed down to the floor. So George Little, with his sixth quarterback sack of 1984, the Hawkeyes trying desperately to get some momentum before they hit the Freedom Bowl on December 26th. A loss of eight on that play, and now Cherry will stick it on the ground. He gets a block around the outside, and he'll get back to almost the original line of scrimmage. No, keep, no keep question under. there. That's a design play. They will do that. They'll run the, uh, the quarterback up the middle, and they'll sprint Cherry out to the outside and get him out there as fast as they can and try to get a convoy of blockers. In the sport of basketball, you constantly hear about that quick first step. But when you when you see Ralph Cherry play football, that phrase comes back to mind because he has an excellent first step. And when you're trying to dodge 250-pound linemen, a quick first step is your best weapon. Third down and long for the Rainbows. No score in this football game. Five minutes remaining in the first quarter. Kyle Mosley went in motion. Here comes the quarterback option. Fletcher has the football, but he'll go down at the 46-yard line. George Fletcher looked for a moment like he had some running room, but Devon Mitchell said no more. Devon Mitchell stayed with the play real well at time, stayed with it, got outside, and then he stuck his head in. Nice tackle by Devon. Let's go down to the field. Gary Dolphin standing by. Gary? Well, Jim, you'll want to keep an eye on Chuck Long when he takes the field again because he was limping noticeably when he got to the sideline after taking that hit on third down just a moment ago. The problem with Senate, left knee. Back up to you. Tom McCarthy standing back at his 40. Robert Smith and Bill Happel awaiting the punt. If you're an Iowa fan, you remember too well what happened to Billy Happel on his last punt return. Boy, this man can punt the football, and it will take an Iowa bounce this time and come all the way back to the 25-yard line. Well, that evened out as far as punts were concerned, and only a 20-yard punt for Tom McCarthy. So let's see if Chuck Long, if in fact, has his mobility hindered. I mean, Long is one of those quarterbacks who almost refuses to come out of a football game. You used to hear about those types of football players in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. They're still around, and there's one right there. Even in Hawaii, they had these players. So Chuck Long with the deuce backfield. Fred Bush and Owen Gill. Wide to the left is Robert Smith. It will be Owen Gill. Bush trying to block out, and Gill will turn the corner, but there's not a lot of room to run. He'll pick up a couple in Iowa. 
will not be able to settle for two and three yard pickups, which is what Hawaii has in mind. Well, I was going to find out that they're going to have a tough time running outside on the University of Hawaii with the quickness that the Rainbows have. Iowa's best bet may be to take it up the middle and just use that superior size, and there's no question about it, they do have superior size up front. Jonathan Hayes has yet to receive a pass this evening. Gill now has 24 yards on the night, eight carries. That's only three per clip. So Chuck Long faced with a second, and Long is looking right. Scott Helverson has the football. He'll step out of bounds at the 38-yard line, and that was dangerously close to a late hit by Norwood. The Hawkeyes have ran that play consistently all year long, an 11-yard pickup. And you'll see that down and out at Kinnick Stadium every Saturday afternoon you're there, Pete. Nice play by Scott Halverson. Receiver out of Des Moines. He just went down and took it down about 10 and turned it out. Do the defensive backs from Hawaii give a little cushion on occasion? Yes, I know they it will. Depends. Yes, they will. They'll, uh, they'll let you go down the field and they'll let you throw underneath. A lot of stunning up on that rainbow front wall. Long says he'll, oh, the little pitch up to Owen Gill, who's got a lot of room. He breaks the tackle at the 45 yard line. The little quarterback pitch by Chuck Long, and he had just about everybody faked out here. A nice quick pitch inside to Rick Bayless. That's the name you're going to be hearing more from in the years to come for the Hawkeyes. A little quick flip inside, the underhand flip, and Rick, a nice move, gets a nice block by Freddie Bush out ahead, and Rick turns it on, gets by. That was Bayless, number 13, who came into the football game. I saw the three when he was streaking down the sidelines. Not Owen Gill, but Rick Bayless, only his 11th carry of 1984, so the trickery works. What a nice way to counteract the pursuit of Hawaii. So Owen Gill is not in the backfield right now. It is Fred Bush and Rick Bayless. Here's a little counter play. Robert Smith stepping up inside to the 20-yard line. James Elias brought him down. Speaking of down, let's go down on the field to Gary Dolphin. Jim, I don't think there's anything noticeably wrong with Owen Gill. I think the big guy's just winded and not used to this 75-degree uh, temperature, but they're not working on him. He's standing on the sidelines, and uh, whether or not Hayden, this is what he talked about earlier in the week about some new people playing different positions, but I look for Gill to go back in shortly. Scott Halverson goes wide left. Bill Happel in the ball game, wide right. Second down and five, Chuck Long. It looks like he's optioning something there on the line of scrimmage, calling the audible. Step up. He's in big trouble, and down he goes. Flag down on the play. Elvis Satelli. I saw a play that Elvis Satelli made last week against New Mexico. He went about 30 yards parallel and caught a man before he even reached the line of scrimmage. Sides against Hawaii. We've got an injury report now on Tim Sennett, the fullback. He has a sprained left knee, a sprained left knee for Tim Sennett, and he will not return in the last regular season game for Iowa. The Hawkeyes have picked up a couple of breaks on this drive before it started. The punt by Hawaii went backwards instead of forwards as far as the Rainbows were concerned, and now the penalty. which sets it back on a first and ten. Now the official trying to get the call straight for someone's benefit. I thought he already made that call. That one was for you fans not paying attention <laughs> here at Aloha Stadium. First and ten, Deuce backfield with Bush and Rick Bayless. Chuck Long wants something in the air, but he better scramble. He'll throw it, or will he stay? He stepped out of bounds. He stepped out of bounds at the 23-yard line. I don't think uh, Chuck saw exactly where he was on the field because he had Jonathan Hayes open about 10 yards in front of him. He just didn't know he was out of bounds. Jack Sims and Al Nanga giving Chuck Long pursuit. Now, it looked, as you'll see it on the instant replay, that Chuck Long had time to throw this football away. But watch what happens. He's looking for Hayes in the end zone. He was covered, and Chuck Long never did look down to see where that sideline was. So a loss of eight for Iowa, and it's backwards instead of forwards right now. That's tough throwing across the grain on the field, especially when you're running for your life. So Long will give it straight ahead to Bush, who pays whatever you pay in Hawaii for a hit like that. Al Nanga, who has a brother playing professional football for the St. Louis Cardinals. 
His brother, uh, Falaniko Nunga, is probably the most legendary defensive player in Hawaii football history. Falaniko Nunga? That's right, and he All plays right. for the St. Louis Cardinals. Bush just got plugged up there. There was no way to go whatsoever. Jack, I'll leave all the Hawaiian names to you. Well, if our viewers back in Iowa could see his shirt, they'd know why. Third and 19. Chuck Long knows what he must do, and the Rainbows are sitting back defensively with their secondary gnashing its teeth. Chuck Long is looking for Happel. Pumps once. Now he wants him in the end zone. And Wrapping up at the last moment by Kirk Defensis. At well, the last moment. Boy, he was wide open. Apple gave it a stop and go at about the 10 yard line, and that shook him free of his defender. And then it was a matter of would the ball get there in time? The answer is coming up on the instant replay. Great Bi pump fake. Billy ran a super route and a nice fake. He gave a step out, and then he was in the open, and a nice defense right there just off Billy's hand. Well, defenses stands 6 1. He needed that last inch on that play. So now a 41 yard field goal attempt by Tom Nickel. It is up and it is pretty good. Right there. Tom Nickel has given Iowa a lead early here in this football game with a minute 08 remaining. Our score Iowa 3 in KCAU TV in Sioux City, Iowa, where Gene Sherman gives you the sports that way. Second down and two yards to go for Rafael Cherry. Oh, everybody jumping offside there, and we'll have to see who did it first. I think Iowa might be guilty on that play. Jeff Drost. Looked like he tried to guess the count and guessed wrong. And when you're 286 pounds and you guess wrong, you don't get away with it. Hard to stop that much beef once it gets moving. So Hawaii picks up the first down in the easiest of manners without even a snap. This is not an untypical uh, first quarter for the University of Hawaii this year. They will play close to the best, and they would like to get you in a defensive struggle. And uh, they are more inclined to play close to the best and then open it up late in the second half. Well, they have come behind in the fourth quarter numerous times this year, I believe six times. They've been a big fourth quarter team. They've won uh, six of their seven in a row, have all been won in the fourth quarter. And it's hard to imagine, but Hawaii has the third longest winning streak in college football. So Ralph Cherry with a fresh set of downs to work with. Sends Killen in motion to the left and looks for Murray over along the line, but he'll be rattled down after about a five or six yard gain. Mike Hooks, the man who stopped him. Once again, it's one of those plays where they're trying to get Walter Murray out in the open field. And if they can get him to get up ahead of steam, then you've got the possibility of a big play. Taking a look at those first quarter stats right now. The uh, key right there, the time of possession, the Hawks, 10 minutes, and it should be 4 minutes and 56 seconds for the Rainbows, and they out outgained them 70 to 45. Ralph Cherry wants to option. He's in trouble, stumbles, and picks up about two yards. Jeff Drost got him from behind. George Little also clogging up traffic for Ralph Cherry. He spins so quickly when he comes out of that snap that you really don't know which direction he's going right away. He does a 360 almost. Well, I was done a good job of containing Cherry. It was George Little who really got in the path of Rafael Cherry that time and made him turn a little more to the left than he wished. So it's third down and two. The Rainbow Warrior fans making a little noise here at Aloha Stadium, and Cherry wants an option. He ducks away from one man. He'll tuck it in and pick up the first down. Boy, there's that scrambling that we talked about earlier. That is a perfect example of what Ralph Cher Cherry can do now. Now they're spotting it just shy of the 35-yard line. Oh. They say his knee touched the ground. Well, they say his knee touched the ground, but he was stretched out forward with that football. Let's we'll see it here. Let's see if he got inside the 35-yard line. You make up your own mind. Good pursuit. Larry Station, the linebacker, was coming down the play. He forces it up, and ooh, I'm not sure. Oh, ah, good I call. Know. I liked it. I liked it. He liked it. <laughs> well, they're going to go for it. Hawaii didn't like it whatsoever, so they'll try to pick up the first down. And does Ralph Cherry do much quarterback sneaking? Before I ask, he does and picks up the first down. George Little's been all over tonight so far. I think it's important for Hawaii to uh, 
keep the football a little bit and give their defense a chance to now catch their breath. How did they make that mark? Uh, I can't understand that mark. It looked, it looked to me like Ralph Terry was over that 35-yard line. We'll see it again. There you see the yard line. Uh, hit the ball, the football is over the 35, at least by an inch or two. And I don't know if they're going to make it. This would be a big boon for the Iowa defense. It's going to be very close, and Iowa does not have the football. Both sides thought they had it. That's how close it was. I thought for a moment we'd have to check with the men at the United Nations and make up our minds on that one. So Hawaii gets a first down in the most difficult fashion by the centimeters and millimeters and whatever those definitions are. I call them inches. 12.51 remaining here in the first half. Iowa leads the football game, 3-0. Ralph Cherry back to pass. He's got plenty of time. Down the middle, it goes incomplete. Looking for his tight end, Ken Hunterman, and Hunterman just couldn't get there in time. Mike Stoops with coverage. That's a somewhat familiar play in that uh, Hawaii will completely ignore their tight end for much of the game, and then all of a sudden they'll try to bust a big play with him. And Underman was open, and the pass just wasn't there. It wasn't a good pass. Thrown a little bit too far to the middle of the field. Looked like Underman might have got a fingertip on it. Second down and 10 yards to go. Aloha Stadium. What a beautiful place to play football. Ralph Cherry now rolls to his left. In hot pursuit, it is George Davis. Outside and out of bounds. At about the 26-yard line. Very close to a first down, but I think he'll be short. Devon Mitchell running him out. He's a good-looking quarterback. Got a pretty good block here that springs him. 43 gets uh, gets out in front, and Cherry close to the first down. And, of course, well, they say he wasn't out of bounds. They did not stop the clock, so we're rolling with just about 12 minutes remaining here in the first half. A lot of folks thought this ball game would be fireworks on Oahu. They thought maybe Iowa would come out and really try to the board but if they had well now everybody's jumping off sides and who did what when well the center Brian Derby thinks uh, Iowa was off sides because he snapped the ball and Ralph Cherry also thinks Iowa was off sides if in fact that is the case it will be a first down Hawaii there's movement left side of the Iowa defensive front look like Hufford it looked like Hufford penetrated the plane there I think when Iowa had this football game put on their schedule, they did not fathom that it would be this tough of, a, of an assignment, Pete. Not at all. I think they were looking for a little paradise out here, and uh, the rainbows are tough, and they're on a roll, and as Jack oh, mentioned man. earlier, this is their bowl game. The way this Saturday has been in college football, and we'll run down the scores for you, it's hard to tell who's going where anymore. Houston did win their football game today, however, over Rice. Houston over Rice. Back to pass. Ralph Cherry. He sends three men down. He's got eight yard line. Ken Hunterman has the football in the first down. Keith Hunter made the stop, but too late as far as Iowa is concerned. Hawks not able to put enough pressure on Ralph Cherry and gave him time to throw. And Cherry found man-on-man -man coverage for Hunterman. Hunterman's your typical tight end in size, 6'5", 235. When, when you have the ball delivered right to your chest, there's only one thing you can do with it, and that's stick on to it. So it's first and goal, Hawaii. They trail 3-0, but for how long? Baha'ola in the backfield along with George Fletcher. Running out of the eye, Cherry wants to take it up the middle, but he'll get very little, maybe one. Nice read there by Paul Hufford. He stayed with his uh, man and then bounced off and made a nice shoestring tackle. That's the kind of play you see a lot in high school football, but you can't really do that in college football unless you have somebody like a Ralph Cherry. Well, if Iowa has been watching the game films, and I suspect that they have, they've seen Cherry do that on a number of occasions right about at that point in the field, at the 10-yard line, and Cherry has shown the ability this year to get it down close to the goal line in just that situation. Shepard Killen has checked in at tight end. He's essentially a receiver. In motion is Murray. I think he's looking for Murray. Murray's not open. He'll go back over the middle and complete. Nobles couldn't catch it. A little too high. He was open. This is the part of the field where the Hawkeye defense really takes pride. They get inside that 10, and the Hawkeyes tighten up. As a good unit, they just want to. They don't allow those teams in the end zone in that part of the field. 
Nobles ran his pattern, and then Cherry kind of was in trouble back there, and oh, he was wide open. The Credit there goes man. to the pass rush because if Cherry has another second or so to get set, he's going to deliver that uh, ball on the money. Cherry five for nine and 53 yards so far. Chuck Long only two out of five for 11. Third and seven for Hawaii. Will they have to settle for a field goal? Ralph Cherry will try and provide the answer here in just seconds. They put Murray in slot left this time. Single back is Faola. Cherry is in trouble. Gets away and throws it away. Now he will do that. He's not shy about throwing the ball away. He's not really concerned about his statistics. Well, Dick told me preaches that and that's one of the things that uh, the rainbows live by is no turnovers and get something out of it throw the ball away rather than take the risk of an interception heavy rush that time by Bruce Geary came from the right end spot got a hold of Cherry but couldn't get the quite the job done Cherry shook him free and then threw the ball about 20 yards out of the end zone Rich Spellman will attempt the field goal. This will be a 29-yard attempt. Good rush, but it looks like it's right there. And we have a tie football game at Aloha Stadium. It is Iowa 3, Hawaii 3. This is the Hawkeye Television. Second quarter, Iowa and Hawaii have both scored on field goals, and now Richard Spellman will send it deep. Kerry Bird and Robert Smith await the kickoff. And this one will stay in play. Robert Smith will let it bound in the end zone. The Hawkeyes will take over at the 20. This turf is very soft if you walk on it. it. It obviously is artificial turf. Gary Dolphin has more on that. Artificial grass, uh, artificial turf has come under a lot of criticism uh, the past couple of years, but what injuries have occurred here tonight has been the direct result of the fierce hitting. Uh, this is a Monsanto rug. It's very soft and cushiony, and uh, the players, uh, if they don't like AstroTurf, they really can't blame this one because it is pretty good, and unlike Kinnick Stadium, which is a lot harder. Back to you, Jim. Owen Gill back in the football game. Fred Bush, Owen Gill takes the handoff and picks up about six or seven yards straight up the gut. Owen Gill is one of the players that was wounded or has been wounded during the week, as Hayden refers to, and uh, hasn't worked out much the past couple of weeks, actually three or four weeks. He had that bad kidney bruise, and uh, it's good to see Owen running hard again. Well, Gill needed only 174 yards coming into tonight to become Iowa's second ever 1,000-yard rusher in a season. And of course, if you count the Freedom Bowl, he's well on his way. O'Gill has problems in the backfield. And Hawaii swarming and penetrating sets up a third down situation, but we've got a flag. We'll check out the penalty. If you're wondering how they got the name Rainbows, it's, it's a story that's almost hard to believe, isn't it, Jack? The legal procedure? Well, back in 1923, uh, they were playing in Honolulu, and Hawaii upset Oregon State. And after the game, a rainbow appeared. And were you there? I mean, did this happen? <laughs> was it pretty, Jack? Tell us. You're, you're talking. You're talking to a Midwest boy here who lived in Iowa for five years. They have rainbows in Iowa on occasion, don't they? Maybe one or two, I think. Well, when the fair comes more, to town. a little Yeah, they're a little more frequent out here. Yeah, and they really. This, this is paradise. If you. If you plan on going to heaven when you pass away from this life, come over to here for a preview, and I mean that. It is it is so nice. You'll be walking down the street, and you'll stop, and you'll say, I can't believe how nice it is. And I assume well, you'll get used to that after a while when you're in your daily lifestyle, but when you're here just for a short period of time, it's beautiful. You don't take it for granted. At least this Midwesterner does. Chuck yeah. Long, third and three. Owen Gill gets the call, but he won't get the first game. And Nunga made sure the first down was not gotten by the Iowa Hawkeyes, so kick it away is what they'll have to do as Gary Kostrabala comes onto the field. The Hawkeyes just aren't finding anything up that middle. The only place so far that's gone was the uh, Rick Bayless run right here. Owen can't find a room and stop short. A big play for the Rainbows. It's like trying to walk into your house without opening the door. Forget it. Kostrabala back inside his 20. It's a nice looking punt away sides will field it back at his 20 and look for some blockers but I don't think there'll be many only oh, breaks the tackle off to the 30 and the 33 yard line well not a bad punt return a 50 yard punt a 12 yard return for Vincent sides there wasn't much of a crack there and he made the most of it sides looking for that one crease he can find he breaks a tackle there there's the one he broke that was George Davis who missed him Zane Corbett in on the tackle, the 
senior Hawkeye. We've got a timeout on the field. Have a first and ten. Iowa has had the football tonight four times, one field goal and three punts. Ralph Cherry with the deuce backfield. A long count for Cherry. And Iowa's defense just staring him in the eyes. Back to pass over the middle it goes and knocked down is Ken Utterman on a powerful hit by Mike Stoops, who made the all Big Ten team this year. And Pete, I think we know why. He knows how to hit. And uh, brother of Bobby Stoops, a good name for the Hawkeyes the past years and before. And Mike stepped right up and uh, put his head right in the numbers here. Cherry was looking at Utterman all the way. That was the play. And he had it for a split second, but that was all. You get your point across real fast when uh, you let the guy know that you can catch the ball, but you're going to get stuck in the ribs. University of Hawaii so far has punted, punted, and had a field goal. Rafael Cherry wants to keep the football, and he'll get some yardage out of this one, maybe five, as he dives down near the 38-yard line. Larry Station, George Davidson on the tackle. George Davis is one of those Hawkeye linebackers. You don't hear much about Station and Spitzig and Davis. They just do their job. And George hung tough on a block and stuck his head in there, and nice tackle by George. So far, Iowa's done an outstanding job of taking the running game away from the Rainbows. Last week against New Mexico, Hawaii ran for almost 400 yards, and uh, Iowa has just shut them down. On the year, Hawaii has averaged 170 yards on the ground, but it's tough sledding tonight. Third and long, Ralph Cherry back for protection. Hopper tries to get him in there. And I think they'll down him back at the 30-yard line. Hopper just jumped over the blocker, and now he got a flag. Well, Cherry thought there was a man as he was going down, but it turned out to be one of his offensive linemen, Joe Onasan. So we'll have intentional grounding, loss it down. The ball will move back even further, and Iowa will get the ball in fairly decent shape as far as field position. Did you see Hufford? She was all over him like a bad smell. 262 yards. You're not supposed to look like you're on some kind of trampoline, but that's what he did. Before the punt, Gary Dolphin checks in. Gary? Uh, Jim, you'd think Buddy Ryan is calling the defensive signals down here. Mike Stoops is doing an outstanding job. They are switching their defenses right before the snap of the football, and Ralph Cherry is failing to audibleize on it at all, and that's the reason for some of the confusion by the Rainbow offense right now. Back up to you. Bill Happel and Robert Smith are back awaiting the punt. It seems like every time we have a punt in this football game, we have some kind of difficulty in communication. And now the officials get things straightened away. Of course, the Rainbow fans are saying, well, they, they have trouble communicating with those folks from Iowa, but that's not true whatsoever. It's the easy lifestyle. 3-3 <laughs> three, is our score with eight minutes remaining here. Oh, a bad snap. But McCarthy does a good job of fielding it and then sends it way back. Robert Smith back to his 15-yard line. Is he going to pick up a block? No, I don't think so. Well, he does a good job of working his way out to the 35-yard line. A 19-yard return when it looked like Robert Smith would be nailed back at the point of reentry. That's uh, outkicking your coverage. Rich Miano made the stop. Miano came into this ballgame with over 100 tackles. Now, if you're a linebacker, you expect that. If you're a defensive back, that's an eye-popping figure. Robert knows how to take him back. Of course, he took one back last year for a touchdown against Purdue, and the little sophomore out of Texas knows how to dance. Robert Smith breaking a couple of tackles and giving Iowa decent field position at the 34-yard line of the Hawkeyes. I formation, that's Owen Gill back. Now they'll switch to the deuce backfield with Fred Bush. Wide to the right is Happel. Chuck Long is looking for Happel. He has him. Does Happel got some room to run? Not much. He'll go down at about the 48, but he will pick up the first down. Well, they gave him a lot of cushion, though, on that far sidelines. Iowa takes advantage of cushion. Kyle Kofensis was the man who really gave Happel a lot of room to operate, a gain of 13 yards on the play. And as you'll see, no one is around. That's a good five, six yards that Kofensis gave him. And the Kofensis family, they could fill a dinner table. 13 brothers and sisters and three of the Kofensises are on this roster. So first and 10 for Iowa. Long has a little difficulty with the snap, and now we'll see if he sets up the screen to Gill. He does, but down he goes. That time it went off to Jonathan Hayes and nothing working on that one. That was Hayes, correction. It was Gill out there throwing the block. Good job by M.L. Johnson who fought off a block and uh, helped contain that play. So the first pass of the night to Jonathan Hayes goes for nil. 
maybe a half yard. Hayes had company right as soon as he turned. He had two people to contend with. Well, they got to be concerned about him because obviously he's a big play man for the Hawks. When Jonathan Hayes runs a crossing pattern over the middle, you could almost take a little bit of that egg money and bet that he'll be open and hang on to the football. He's got a great pair of hands. Second down. Some stunning by the Rainbows defensively. Chuck Long sees it and drops straight back. He's looking long. This is how he's intercepted. Intercepted. Fred Hempel. And Hempel is still running. Hempel up to the 40 feet. And Hawaii has the football. Fred Hempel with the interception. A 6'3", 174 senior out of Long Beach, California. Looked like Long threw that ball in the crowd. That uh, the man was well covered. Chuck knew it. He, he, he knew he shouldn't have thrown it. It was a duck when it went out there, and the player read it well. He left her fly here on the flats and just didn't have enough on it. Comes up short going for Jonathan Hayes and a nice interception. Hayes had double coverage, Hemphill in front and defenses in back. And Hemphill makes a nice return here, coming across the field laterally, looking for a few blocks and finding them. Hemphill is a guy that uh, a lot of teams have tried to pick on this year, and some with a little bit of success. Hempel uh, was not scheduled to start tonight, but got the start. And Dick Tomey is glad he called his number. Flea Flicker, Ralph Cherry, Murray? No, it's not Murray. They're going to go to Honorman. Honorman's going to block down to the 30. Big play for Hawaii, and they've got a first down. Murray was wide open at the 10. And to a, he looked like he was initially looking for. I saw Murray flying down the right sideline, and when I saw the Flea Flicker, I said, uh-oh, you see the Flea Flicker? Fletcher gets it, quickly turns. Iowa has used this play a lot, Pete. At least nice, three or four times. Yeah, you bet. A nice play here coming up by George Davis to try to stop it, and then it's Keith Hunter who will eventually make the final stop. Gain of 16 yards on that play. Well, Cherry had two people to throw to. He took the up man, and he still came out smelling like a cherry. Up the middle it goes. New Ufaola picks up about four yards, and the crowd with their standard chant of new, new, new. That's Larry a play Station. they will run a lot. They'll get the flow going one way and do a little counter with Paola up the middle. And that is Willie Goes still around. Not too many. That goes back to the days of Forrest Eveshevsky. Forrest Eveshevsky played a team from Hawaii and won big. This is George Fletcher. Oh, what a pop, and he'll go down at the 28-yard line. That was Hap Peterson. He stepped up and, whew, Hap knows how to put his head in there. He's at the nose guard position. Peterson started the year as the starting nose guard for the Iowa Hawkeyes, got injured, and as happens in college athletics, there are so many people wanting that job. Jeff Drost stepped in, batted a couple of passes away in the Penn State game, and it was hard to get Drost out of there. Well, when they lost Junior Lapate, the Rainbows, uh, they had to go to George Fletcher, who is a fine runner and has a lot of good moves, but he's not someone who's going to run in there where it's dark, as Hayden Fry would say. Yeah. He's a little guy, 5'10", they list him at 185, and I guarantee you that is generous. If he's, uh, if he's over 165 pounds, uh, that's good size for George Fletcher. And Fletcher has had a history of injuries ever since he's been at Hawaii. He's been the, like that unfulfilled promise. Everybody's always been expecting big things from George Fletcher. He has finally shown that in the last few weeks. But he is the type of player that you got to give him a little running room. you got to get him a block, and then he'll take over from there. He is very quick and very shifty, but he's not going to run where there isn't much blocking and run inside. While we have a moment here, our thanks to the following stations for their remote production facilities, KHNL and KHON. KHNL, of course, with Jay Curley as director. And KHON with Jim McCormick helping us out, the production manager for KHON, where we've spent the last couple of days wondering why Jack Weirs has such a huge office. <laughs> 5.45 remaining here in the second quarter. I've been taking you to the general <laughs> manager's office. <laughs> oh, that's what it was. 39 for the Rainbows. Cherry eludes the rush, tries to find the right side, but there won't be a lot of room there in Iowa. Make sure he stays out of bounds. The Hawkeyes lucky no flags flew. We are seeing some kind of hitting tonight. These teams came to play tonight. Mike Stoops leading the charge there. Those defensive backs just came out and said, Mr. Cherry, there is no corner here anymore. Well, the Hawkeyes are keying on Ralph Cherry, and that's certainly not a bad idea, because I think if you take away and nullify Cherry, you have pretty well shut down the University of Hawaii offense. 
Fritz Spellman is about to attempt the 37 yard field goal his longest of the year 52 yards. This is well within his range quite obviously. So the Hawkeyes may be facing a three point deficit if Rich Spellman can find the uprights and it looks like he will. It is deep. Spellman from long distance. It is Hawaii six Iowa three. We'll return after these words from your local Warriors have their first lead of the evening as Richard Spellman will approach the football at the 40. And he's been consistently putting it in the end zone but this one will come down right on the line. Robert Smith up to the 10 the 15 and down he goes inside the 20. That last scoring drive by Hawaii consisted of five plays set up by the interception by Hemphill. Well, you talk about even games so far. Total yardage, Hawaii 98 yards and Iowa 93 yards. I guess the tone of this game has been set. Well, everyone around the country knows about Iowa's defense. Time of possession, as you just saw, one minute and 15 seconds. So Chuck Long comes out with the deuce backfield. He'll turn and he'll give to Kevin Harmon, who's in the football game on the halfback option. Anybody out there? Somebody closest man to that football for Iowa was Robert Smith. You see him missing the tackle there, so Hemphill has his second interception of the night. And Hayden Fry is talking uh, to the young man about that pass because obviously something was out of kilter for the Hawkeyes on that play. Harmon has played a little quarterback, very little, in the first game of the season against Iowa State. He electrified the crowd, but tonight, oh, Ralph Cherry in trouble. George Little, say hello. Once again, the big guy rises to the occasion, and you were wondering. I'm sitting here watching. You wonder when a big play was going to erupt and go someone's way, and the Rainbows came up with that one. Harmon gave it everything he had on that throw. You'll see Cherry here trying to elude George Little, which is like trying not to look at the ocean when you're in Hawaii. Forget it. I'm really impressed by the Hawkeye pass rush so far and their ability to contain Cherry. Let's quickly go down to the field and Gary Dolphin. Gary? Uh, Jim, I'm stunned by the last two interceptions, Long and now Harmon. They threw the ball right to uh, the cornerback. There wasn't a Hawkeye right into zone coverage. Nobody near the football for Iowa. Paola, the lone setback. Murray in motion to the left. Back goes Cherry, and is he looking for Murray? He can't find him, but he'll go to Nobles, and it's incomplete. Is Cherry hot and cold or is he consistent? Well, Cherry's been more consistent than he has shown tonight, but obviously the Iowa pass rush certainly says a lot about the way Ralph Cherry's thrown the ball. He's gotten off a couple of very poor passes, and I'd have to say this is one of them. He threw it off his front foot. Nobles was open, and he just couldn't get the ball there. Nobles tried to put on the brakes and come back for it. Cherry on the evening, 6 of 13, 69 yards, total passing. We've got a timeout Hawaii right now. Hawaii football program around tell me only one losing season since coming here in 1977 third down 17 yards to go for Hawaii Faola and William Bell in the backfield but they won't be called on here for anything but blocking Cherry is down again by the Iowa rush Iowa's rush has arrived at Aloha Stadium and now a little extracurricular activity Mike Hooks mixing it up with one of the rainbows Paul Hufford again Daryl Ursary Paul Hufford stepped in on that sack, and they are coming. That is the third Iowa sack of the night, and we have holding against Hawaii to boot. This is a big defensive series by the Hawkeyes because uh, with the two turnovers, Hawaii really had a chance to kind of take command of this game. And late in the half, if they could have punched it in here, it would have been a huge lift to them to go into halftime with, say, a 13-3 uh, uh, lead. Keep flying. 
Iowa will pass on the penalty obviously with that third and 17 going by the boards. So back to punt it is Tom McCarthy. Robert Smith standing at his 10. He'll try to cut this football off before it goes to a corner. If McCarthy so desires he can just simply lay it in the end zone. But he's going to try to stick it inside the 10 somewhere. The rush is coming but McCarthy gets it off and let's see who gets a bounce. It won't matter. It's in the end zone. 41 yard punt by McCarthy. Iowa will have the ball at the 20 yard line. Let's go down to the sidelines and Gary Dolphin. Well Jim uh, the word on Kalakau is uh, he took a shot up in the upper the lower throat area. He was back in on that last series of plays and uh, he looks to be OK. It's going to be interesting. Hayden Fry came over and did a little chewing on the Iowa offensive line. He's very upset with the way they're playing. It's going to be interesting to see how they fire off the ball the final 349 of the first half. What Hayden Fry had to say to Ronnie Harmon after the halfback option pass was intercepted would spoil the vacation. Chuck Long with the deuce backfield. Here comes the blitz and Dan Lowry stayed up. How did he stay up? Long now has room to run. He'll take it out of bounds at about the 25. Oh, Chuck Long showed why he is one of the more sought after quarterbacks by the NFL because of his strength. Chuck well, he just fought off Alvis Satelli and not very many people do that. Satelli will ring him right here. And off goes Chuck Long. He's looking for a receiver at that point, but a good job by the Hawaii secondary. And he was run out of bounds at that point by Anthony Woodson. He paid the price over there on the sidelines. If you can get that ball carrier just an inch before he steps out of the sidelines, it's it's all legal, folks. All fair, love, war, and football. Chuck Long will give it to the deep back. He's got room to run and stretches it out. Looks like Rick Bayless on the carry out over the 30-yard line to the 33, where he's met by Rich Miano. Bayless, a sophomore out of Hugo, Minnesota. Six foot, 200 pound tailback. He's Good hole for him. Good blocking up front by that offensive line that just heard from Hayden Fry. He's a tough kid, that Bayless. I want to know who named the town Hugo before I die. First down in 10, Iowa. They trail in this football game by three. Six three, our score, along with plenty of time. He'll send it out to Bayless. Nice catch, and down he goes at the 38. James Elias really let him know who was in town. That was a good catch by Bayless on the fingertips. Hayden has been high on Rick Bayless all along, and he's just uh, held his ground and uh, stayed in there and makes a nice grab, Rick Bayless. While we watch Bayless make the catch, let's go for another injury report and Gary Dolphin. Or uh, lack thereof, Jim uh, Owen Gill just standing on the sidelines, whether or not he's just not getting the job done or having a bad night or what, but Bayless seems to be doing the job in there right now. So Gill is out, and Bayless gets the carry and gets hit before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. ML Johnson on the on the hit. So much for the third down for Iowa. And now we've got a timeout Hawkeyes as Chuck Long comes to the sideline. If Iowa should lose this ball game, I think everybody in the state of Iowa knows that the possibility of finishing the season at 500 is very much alive. I don't want to think about that at all, Jim. And uh, one thing with uh, Owen Gill on the sidelines, you might wonder about that kidney bruise he had back in the... Uh, Wisconsin game and had to sit out a ball game down at Indiana. Yeah, that's not an injury that will show itself to the fans here at Aloha Stadium. That's of the internal variety. And if you're hurting inside, you can't really tell from our vantage point or Gary Dolphin's vantage point. Again, we'd like to thank our Hawkeye Television Network, of course, WQAD TV in the Quad Cities, KGAN TV in Cedar Rapids and Waterloo. KDUB TV in Dubuque, where Gary Dolphin is the sports director. Of course, KCAU TV in Sioux City. KCCI TV in Des Moines, where we say hello to Pete Taylor. We hope he's not freezing his microphone off. KAL TV in Austin and Mason City. And KTVO TV in Kirksville and Ottumwa. We thank you for joining us live from Hawaii. How many islands altogether do we have? Billions and billions. But seven major ones? Seven major ones. Third down and four for the Iowa Hawkeyes as Chuck Long goes back to pass. He is looking wide and oh, Jonathan Hayes is separated from the football by Rich Miano. Rich Miano, who has made the all-whack team two years in a row, 
just gave Jonathan Hayes the whack of his life. You don't see Hayes drop too many footballs, Jack Weirs. Now that's Looks very like he close, helped. very close to a fumble. Yep, and he punched the ball out of there. That's something that uh, Hawaii on defense stresses a lot of, going for the football, trying to strip the football, forcing turnovers. That, is, oh, that has been a big plus for the University of Hawaii defense this year. They are rated fifth in the nation in turnover ratio. For every turnover they capture, which is an average of three a game, they give up only one. So when you have a three to one ratio turnover, or turnover ratio, I should say, or whatever the term is, that wins football games for you. So Costa Bala standing back at his 25, Rush, who almost got it. And Vincent Sides will have a little time, but a lot of yellow and gold down there, and down he goes at the 25. Well, special team guys, boy, that, I'll give them a lot of credit because they're out there on a lot of guts. Brian Fallon was the man who made that stop. 39-yard punt and a three-yard return by Vincent Sides. Not too bad for Brian because he's the man who's snapping on those punts, and so he did his job, got the ball back, and also got down on the coverage. So he uh, gets a high mark from Hayden Fry. And Hayden Fry was right when he said, just take a look out on the field and see who's playing on certain situations because we've got quite a few new entries into this 12th regular season game. I liked Ke Kevin Harmon throwing that halfback option. I thought that was a good element of surprise, but it turned back into the face of Iowa. Rafael Cherry will try to get some more points on the board with 2.15 remaining here. Give us to Fletcher, and Fletcher cuts it back inside to about the 30-yard line. Now, what Hawaii would like to do in a game like this, in close game, they would like to run it a couple of places. If they can get it up to about the 40-yard line, then they'll open it up. But Dick Tomey is basically a pretty conservative coach in his philosophy, and he doesn't want any turnovers in a situation here where Iowa can get the ball back and get on the board. There is Mr. Tomey, who, among other things, runs marathons. So he is not a coach who goes home and gets out of shape. Cherry up the middle to Paola, and Paola will barely make it past the line of scrimmage. Larry Station stood him up in steady station. An All-American candidate definitely for the Hawkeyes and don't hear much from Larry he's the Hawkeyes leading tackler but he sure makes his presence known out on the field station a very soft-spoken man computer engineering his major and you could probably count all the computer engineers in college football on oh maybe one foot I prefer to count it on my one oh I thought maybe in the islands they used other extremities but not so Ralph Cherry back to pass on a third and four situation. It looks like he's going to pick up the first down, and he does. Out to the 39, so he'll keep the drive alive. And now with 58 seconds remaining, Hawaii might want to call a timeout or at least run a quick play here. Now you're going to see Hawaii open it up. They're going to try to get in field goal position, and they're going to throw the 20-yard pass. Gain of seven for Cherry on the all-important third down conversion. 56 seconds remaining in the first half. Cherry back to pass. Oh, plenty of time. Over the middle it goes. Caught and down. Unterman with the football at about the 46-yard line. Unterman's catching quite a few passes tonight considering he only had 10 catches coming into the ball game, but he too was injured. He's been banged up much of the season. Cherry again. This is getting to be a familiar scene. Scrambling out of the pocket. Can he elude the rush? He does and steps out of bounds with a first down at about the 48-yard line of Iowa. Smart play by Ralph Cherry. Got the first down and uh, then promptly got out of bounds. I think they said Ralph stepped out of just uh, this side of the first down. Looks like he's short of it. Right you are, Pete. Well, it's going to be about a third and one for the Rainbows. But more importantly, only 23 seconds left on the clock with the Rainbows with one timeout remaining. It looked like Bruce Gear might catch up with him in the backfield, but once Cherry got around him, it was a matter of where he would step out on the sidelines, and the officials say one of the spikes went out at about the 48-yard line. I think he gave him a, a Hawaiian hip. A Hawaiian hip. We've seen plenty of those here. Third and one, Cherry directly up the middle to William Bell, and Bell picks up the first down and more across the midfield stripe. Timeout, Hawaii. Six three is our score. It has been a battle of field goals thus far. Do Hawaiian fans like 
offensive oriented sports do they like to see a lot of points go on the board oh unquestionably uh, dick Tomey, for uh, all the victories that he has brought into hawaii has come under fire many times over the course of the years that he's too conservative and that that the, the rainbows have all these weapons and that they should be putting points on the board and throwing it around and he went and he tried that last year with cherry and it just didn't work and they tried at the beginning of this year and promptly lost their first two games and he junked it he went to a more conservative uh, uh, style of football they cut down the playlist uh, quite a bit they made uh, the blocking and the the number of plays uh, they narrowed that down considerably and with it came success and it's hard to argue yet there's still a lot of there, there's some disenchantment the folks want to see points and then of course last week against new mexico they rolled up 48 points and uh, shredded New Mexico, and everybody kind of bored about that uh, at about halftime because it was too easy. You can't please everybody all of the time or sometimes any of the time. Well, you know, football fans are tough wherever you go. Now we'll see one of those offensive formations that Hawaii is famous for. Three wide receivers out wide to the right. Murray Nobles. They also send William Bell out there. The lone setback is Nu'u Fa'aola which is fun to say. Cherry goes back to pass. Good protection, stays in the pocket, over the middle. Oh, they tried to flip it off on the catch and then the lateral, and now we've got a loose ball, and it looks like Hawaii recovered. That play was designed. Well, they're trying to bust the big play and pitch it back, and they don't have any timeouts, and that is going to be the half. That's Hunter, all they're going to get off. Yeah, Unterman caught that football, and he was trying to pitch it to one of, a, one of the halfbacks, I believe, or one of the wide receivers who was trailing behind him. Tom Nickel. Gary, if you can still hear me, is it, how's the temperature down there on the field? The uh, temperature, uh, very comfortable, Jim. I don't think that's really a factor. I thought maybe Owen might have been a little worn out uh, from, the, from the heat, if we can use that word, but there's very little humidity here. As you well know, temperature has dropped down to about 70 degrees. It is very comfortable down here. At game time, it was 75 degrees, but the Hawks are feeling the heat, even though the temperature has dipped down to 70. Williams with the football right up the middle, gets a block and goes down at the 23-yard line. Bruce Gear made the stop on the special teams. Gear is playing tonight. Of course, Dave Strobel did not make the trip, and there is some mystery surrounding that. At this point, Hawaii has to be very pleased with their efforts so far. But I'm sure if there's one thing Dick Tomey talked to them about is uh, that work up front and establishing the run. There's Herky in one of those Hawaiian shirts that our producer Jeff Swanson has almost made famous here in the islands. Nice looking shirt though. Nice looking shirt. Now look at this formation by Hawaii. Four wide receivers all in a row. Call this one the domino route. Ralph Cherry will go back and look the other way, and he's got a man wide open, but he overthrows him. That was Murray. Threw it just out of his reach. Jack, is that something normal? That's the first time I've, I've seen uh, uh, four men in that alignment, I guarantee it. They'll do it again, and they'll take the quick snap. And Ralph Cherry this time, I thought he was going to go out of the shotgun, but he'll come up under his center. Well, Dick Tomey was not sitting idly by during the halftime intermission. Cherry now will go to one of those four receivers. Got a man open at the 34-yard line. That is Aguiar, David Aguiar, with the catch. And he looks from here to have the first down. Now they're going to go without a huddle. A gain of 12 on the pass play. First and 10 Hawaii, and now they'll switch the four wide receivers to the right. Well, I don't know if it'll work, folks, but it sure as heck is entertaining got the natives going and the Hawkeye fans about 3,500 strong down here they're they're still sitting on their hands waiting for some Hawkeyes to do something the key to this play is can Ralph Cherry get any time he has no blockers in the backfield over to Murray wide open with a juke move he'll be ridden out of bounds by Nate Breer and now the Hawaii fans are interested well, that'll get you to sit up and take notice, no question about that. And another quick snap coming up. No huddle for Hawaii. They have come out in the second half, and they are not going to let the Iowa defense rest or gather any kind of information in a huddle of their own. Now Cherry wants to talk it over. So much for establishing the run, like I was talking about. Well, now, the coach for BYU has an interesting philosophy. He says, all my coaching lifetime, I have been taught that you have to establish the ground game to set up the passing game. Where is it written that you can't set up the run with your passing game? 
Ralph Cherry to the deep back and tripped up his Fletcher. George Fletcher gets maybe a yard or so. He only needed a yard for the first down, but he'll be short of that mark. Paul Hufford with a stop for Iowa. He's been doing it all season long, and Paul with good penetration up the middle. Here's another one of those players, Jim, that uh, had a chance to come back for a fifth season, but he's elected not to. So it will be third and very short yardage as Aguiar checks out for Hawaii. They'll run out of the eye with Nuu Fa'aola in the backfield along with George Fletcher. Double tight end. And the quarterback keeper will produce a first down via Ralph Cherry. It'll be interesting to see how this third quarter goes uh, during the season. The third quarter has been all Hawkeyes. They've outscored their opponents 70 to 13. And right now the Rainbows are going against that. Aguiar back in the lineup. Cherry just following the left side of that line behind Brian Derby and Darrell Ussery. This Hawaii team talks more to one another in the huddle than any team I've ever seen. And now they'll put a man in the slot right and send Murray in motion to the right. Pitch goes to Fletcher. He's tripped up in the backfield by Stoops, who penetrated and got back in there. Mike Stoops with a good defensive play. Otherwise, Fletcher might have got down the field a little further. There's Stoops gambling, coming up quickly. Right there. Fa'aola was still out in front, ready to throw a block. He has the ability to make a few yards there if he gets by. Stoops. The Iowa offense has been sputtering. The defense has done a good job tonight, as it has all season long, but they trail 6-3. Ralph Cherry has got plenty of time. Flips it off in the flat, and he overthrows his intended receiver, George Fletcher. He was lucky that the, the ball glanced off of... Uh, the offensive lineman in front of him, Brian Derby, because that ball would have been intercepted otherwise. Now see if Fletcher is throwing off his front foot, or I should say Cherry. Is he throwing off his front foot? He throws off his back foot and throws it over the intended receiver. Yeah, that would have been picked off if not for the big offensive lineman. Now they threw a flag down there, and I, and I wonder if that's an Ill ineligible receiver downfield. We'll wait and see. Since it hit a lineman, that could be the call. However, it glanced off of George right. Fletcher's hands. So I would say that can't be a legal receiver downfield unless he was down the field too far, according to the officials. And now Dick Tomey gets the explanation. Whatever was said, it didn't look like he was ready to swallow it. The illegal touching of the forward pass, trying an eligible, lost it down five yards. Well, that's the call. Lost it down in five yards. Tell you what, I don't like that call because it glanced off somebody else's hands. We'll see it again. Fletcher obviously touched the football. And if a lineman can catch a ball with his back, he'll make the 10 o'clock news. So now we have more conversation on the field. Cherry was obviously upset about the call. He didn't like it at all. Five yards walked off against Hawaii, and now it's third and 11. Hawkeyes have switched their defense. They've gone with another defensive back, Craig Hartman, the senior out of Cedar Rapids, Jefferson, number 44, in there in the D back now. Add on the five yard penalty and correct the third down situation. It is now third and 16 for Rafael Cherry, who's playing his last game here in Aloha Stadium. Long count. Iowa doesn't bother him on the rush. Over the middle it goes, and he's got a man. That is killing the tight end. He'll be short of the first down by a couple of yards. Nate Creer came up to make the hit. And Cherry has used his tight ends real well tonight. Shepard Killen is uh, the tight end that they go to. He is almost an exclusive uh, passing and receiving tight end. When he's in there, you know they're going to throw the ball. Some of the fans, of course, wanted him to go on the fourth down situation, but the punter, Tom McCarthy, will enter the ball game now. Dick Tomey saying, I'll take my chances by giving up the football. I want to pin Iowa deep into their own territory. Robert Smith and Bill Happel will drop back deep. No rush put on by Iowa. And this one is a wobbly high kick. Let's see if Hawaii gets a bounce. Well. It went straight out of bounds at about the 15. 
McCarthy will settle for it, but I'm sure he'd rather have it back and try again. A punt of 28 yards, he definitely would like to have it back. I don't know. Anytime you get it inside the 20 yard line, you've accomplished. Uh, True. But if you something. get it inside the five, it's easier to go back to the sideline. <laughs> Big series here for the Hawkeyes. I think they really have got to come out and establish some type of offense, which they didn't do at all in the first half. So Iowa gets their hands on the first football of the second half as Chuck Long waits for the official to start the clock. And we've got whistles and everything will halt. Again, Owen Gill is not in that backfield. As Gary Dolphin has told us from the sidelines, nothing noticeable, but it could be that kidney bothering him again. I agree with Pete. I think this is an important Good series man. for both Iowa and uh, the University of Hawaii. Awesome. Illegal procedure by the Iowa Hawkeyes. Tom Humphrey, the man who got caught for it. And as usual, that's the only time you'll ever notice an offensive lineman, unless you're a line coach. So far, the Iowa fans haven't really been heard from tonight. Let's go quickly down to Gary Dolphin. Gary? Well, Jim, uh, Dr. John Albright is uh, tailing Owen Gill everywhere he goes. He's got his helmet on, and he's trying to jog up and down the sidelines, but he's definitely hurting somewhere. Back up to you. Out of the eye formation, Jonathan Hayes, the man standing up on the line of scrimmage. Quick give up the middle, Fred Bush, and he'll work his way out past the 15-yard line, up to the 17, maybe a gain of two for Iowa. Well, actually, a gain of seven after the penalty. James Elias made the stop. Hawkeyes played many slug fests like this. Michigan State game was brutal. Same way with Wisconsin. I think the Wisconsin game was the hardest hitting of the whole season thus far. That, of course, the game where Chuck Long had to leave the game in the fourth quarter and Ronnie Harmon broke his leg in two places, not just one. Hawaii doing a lot of stunning defensively, and Chuck Long, will he have time? He dumps it over the middle of Bush. Bush has the football and the first down for Iowa. Out past the 25 to the 28-yard line where Jack Sims halts his progress. Good presence of mind by Chuck Long. He knows all he has to do here is get the first down. Chuck was looking, looking to his left. He had Billy Happel out wide on the left side and finally went to a secondary receiver, Fred Bush, over the middle. 6-3 is our score. Hawaii leads it. We'll be back. This is the Hawkeye Television Network. Off the field, injury doesn't look serious from here. First and 10, Iowa. With 10 minutes and 49 seconds remaining in the third quarter, the Hawkeyes looking for that postseason momentum. So far, no go. Long pumps once, dumps it off on the side. He's got a man open. That's Jonathan Hayes, and he'll go down at the 35. Jonathan Hayes, 6'5", 250. That's like getting a Mack truck out in the open when you try to take him down. Tui Asasopo made the tackle on that play. First name, Ana. Cousin of Manu, Tui Asasopo, plays for the 49ers. And a tough kid. Long gave the pump fake and then just gently dumped it off to the side. Jonathan Hayes had laid back and gone back into the backfield after throwing a block at the line of scrimmage. And Hayes is a tough cookie to bring down. Second and three after the seven-yard gain. Counter play up the middle and Fred Bush meet some problems, but I think he may have the first down. M.L. Johnson made the stop. It'll be close. Yeah, first down Iowa. So as you pointed out, Pete, this is a very important drive for a lot of reasons. One, to establish some kind of offense for Iowa. Two, not to put the ball back into the hands of Hawaii. They've got to eat some clock here. Definitely. It looked like a good audible that time with Chuck Long calling off and checking off at the line and then giving to Freddie Bush for the first down. The time in Hawaii, 9.35 on a Saturday evening. Chuck Long rolls left. He's got blockers out in front of him. He's looking for Happel, and Happel can't hang on. Happel was tiptoeing along the sideline, trying to keep those feet in. Rick Miano keeping him company there. I was accomplishing something here. They're moving the ball just far enough up the field that even if they have to kick it away here, Hawaii's going to have it in, in bad field position. Chuck Long had plenty of time. He had Bush and Rick Bayless back there in the backfield, and he threw it off his left foot and just a little too high for Happel to hang on to. I think if the ball had been thrown just a little lower, Bill Happel would have had a reception. You get the feeling a turnover is going to make the difference in this game. When Iowa has had nightmares in this season, it has been because of the turnover. The draw play. Bayless has got some running room, and he's out over the 45-yard line before being hit by Kofensis. And Bayless... 
gets it within reasonable first down distance for a third and short situation. Rick sneaks up on your nice play here, the little draw play. And he hits a good block up the middle, and he's uh, picked up a good game, but uh, quiet guy. You don't hear much from Rick. Mike Flagg and Helverson come into the ball game. We go down to Gary Dolphin quickly. Uh, Jimmy, the word on Owen Gill is it's not anything specific. It's just a combination of things. He's just beaten up and uh, can't come in right now. Scott Helverson wide to the left. Chuck Long will option pitch it to Bayless, and hello, said Satelli. I believe that's Satelli. No, it's M.L. Johnson. M.L. Johnson came up, read the play perfectly. Chuck Long pitched it back to Bayless, and Bayless had nowhere to roam. Well, I'll tell you what, they were having a little success inside, and it kind of surprised me that they try to go outside uh, against Hawaii, a very quick Hawaii team. So Gary Castroballo will get his foot loose for the second half as Vincent Side stands back inside his 15-yard line. Nothing shaking but the palm trees out here in Hawaii for Iowa so far. Castroballo, who almost gets it blocked. And now Sides will wait for it to come down at the 10-yard line. They'll try to cut it back, stays inside, and goes down at about the 15-yard line. 6-3 our score. We'll return after these words from even off the mainland. Tim Sennett, the starting fullback tonight, left this ball game with a strained left knee. He will not return. Owen Gill, as Gary Dolphin just reported, simply beaten up and can't go at the moment. He is standing on the sidelines. Jim, big, this is a big drive for the University of Hawaii. The first half was played on a lot of emotion. They were sky high for the game. Now let's get down to play football. Fletcher and Faola in the backfield. Check it. That's William Bell with a carry over the left side and out over the 20-yard line. Well, William Bell is a bigger kid, and he can uh, he can take it inside a little better than George Fletcher, and I think we might be seeing a little bit more of William Bell as he trots off the field. William Bell, who you will see get the carry here, the second back through, had some words with Bruce Gear before going back to the huddle. Good tackle by George Davis from West Des Moines. Iowa's defense has played well, but without points. A good defense is only good statistically. Murray in motion to the right. First back through. Oh, the big running room. Oh, the right to the 40, and then he goes at the 42-yard line. Nate Greer with the rodeo tackle, and Nuhu Faola got the fans on their feet. You take Nuhu Faola up high. You got to tackle Nuhu Faola down low because he has great upper body strength and he can carry people and watch him do just that right here. It's like trying to hang on to a bowling ball that's just been dipped in Wesson oil. You can't hang on to it, no way. Well, there's a thought. Yeah, just one. <laughs> <laughs> so Faola gets a big hole over the left side and now, most importantly for Hawaii, they've got room to operate. As Jack Weirs has said during the course of this game, this is where they like to do things. Half-back option, William Bell's got a man. Should have been a little bit more aware of that possibility with William Bell in the backfield because he's done this a number of times this season and his receiver Aguiar is wide open and if you don't think he's done that a number of times this season listen to this that is Bell's fourth pass of the year he now has 126 yards off the halfback option Keith Hunter did a nice play to come up and uh, stop that uh, big game and because he was on the deep man at that time yeah it looked like Aguiar was strolling down toward the 30, but Hunter came up and made a quick hit, but it's first and 10 Hawaii. The Hawks trying to dig in. Faola, nothing much over the left side. And he is wrestled down there by Larry Station. George Little also in there. George Little, a senior for the Iowa Hawkeyes. This is the muddle huddle. The muddle huddle, look at this. Cherry will give it the big thing. Hey, Bellows down inside the 25. You'll see it once, maybe twice a year, and this is the first time that we have seen it in 1984. Let's see it again. If you're living in Iowa, you've never seen this. And Dick Tomey likes to use it in a game just like this. The muddle huddle is what it's called. Two people go over by the football. Everybody else hangs out over on the left side like a street gang or something, milling around, and they try to detract the attention of the defense and it worked Iowa was not ready for it a large gain for Hawaii a nine yard pickup it's third and one Cherry sends Murray in motion to the right 
Cherry will roll right. And he's got room, and he may have the first down. It looked like he had an opening, and then he had to tuck it in. We'll have to see where they mark it. It'll be close. Cap Peterson and Larry Station closed it quickly for the Hawkeyes, and a good thing they did. That muddle huddle was too quick for the electronic replay to catch well, it. Well, that's the key to the muddle huddle. You've got to get it off fast before the defense can react to it. Jerry did have enough for the first down with that final dive, as you'll see here, rolling right. Hooks trying to play the pass and or the run. Good dip in there and wrapped up. As Pete Cypher told you by Hat Peterson, the young man from Bettendorf, Iowa. If, if Hawaii would go down and score on this play, Iowa could be I don't need serious. to tell you this, they're in big trouble. Serious trouble. In the backfield, lone setback is Fa'aola. Terry looks, he bumps into a lineman, goes out on the play, almost intercepted by Iowa. Almost intercepted. Murray couldn't hang on, it was too high. And Devon Mitchell almost had another interception. He leads this ball club in that department. Once again, the pressure put on Ralph Cherry kept him from getting just enough time that he needed to plant and throw. He kind of threw that in a hurry, and it was up in the air. Sure. Iowa's done a good job at forcing him to throw when they want him to throw and not when Ralph Cherry wants to throw. Cherry almost got tangled up with a big offensive lineman. He bounced off him and then threw it over on the left side. Murray was open. Second down, 10 yards to go for the Rainbow Warriors. who are trying to win their eighth ball game in a row. There's a man open on the play. It is He's inside the tender. Whistled down at the five-yard line. Baal has become a big play man for the University of Hawaii as the season has progressed, especially as they get down near the goal line. Baal filters out of the backfield, Jack, and he is going to be wide open. Hawkeyes came with a blitz that time. Station came up the middle. Took a gamble. It didn't work out for the Hawkeyes that time. Well, he's collaring him like a doggy. That was Stoops, Mike Stoops. 176 pounds against Paola, who weighs 210. But now it is first and goal, and the Iowa defense is called on once again in 84. Killen and Unterman. Double tight end offense. Over the middle intercepted by Angela. And down in the end zone. It is Devon Mitchell with the interception. What a, what a great play because Unterman was open for just a split second. Devon, he's done that all season long, and folks might remember against Michigan, he had that return on that uh, touchdown that broke the Wolverines back in the third quarter when he brought it back 75 yards and looked like he was gone for a touchdown. Devon read it perfectly. He was sitting back there and came away with the theft. Mitchell with his fifth interception of the campaign, and it is a big stopper as far as Iowa is concerned. You can almost hear the collective sigh of relief down there on the sidelines. You also got to give Devon credit for not trying to bring that one back out. He just kneeled down and uh, touched back in the Hawks circuit at first and 10 at the 20. Many times it's best to have a teammate tackle you in the end zone when you're not quite aware of what the situation is. Mitchell sets up the offense with a big defensive play. Can Chuck Long take him down the field? Play action. Looking right for Bill Happel. Fakes once, goes over the middle to Bush. Bush has the football and down he goes. At the 34, enough for a first down and then some. That was Jonathan Hayes, I believe. Check it. Was it Hayes? Hayes threw a nice push? block on the play to help that 14-yard gain. Nice little dump off pass to Fred Bush, and it was Hayes who will come up with a nice block. Long looking downfield, looking for Happel on the right wing. Doesn't go to him. Then he goes over the middle to Bush with a little flip pass. Then it's Jonathan Hayes with a nice crunch block right here, setting Bush up for the 14-yard gain. First and 10, Iowa. Apple is the wide receiver right. Chuck Long goes back to pass. This time he's got some time. It's over the middle and it's complete. Jonathan Hayes with the reception at the 38 yard line. Anthony Woodson brought him down, stood him up. Said that's as far as you're gonna go. It would seem that on this drive, Iowa has abandoned the run and said, well, if we can get him with the short stuff, let's go that route. And the middle has been open. Definitely. The Rainbows will not give up anything deep, it looks like, tonight. Six-yard gain via Jonathan Hayes and Chuck Long, and now Long trying to get the attention of Scott Helverson, who is the wide receiver right. And now Long will roll right with Bayless and Bush out in front of him. He's got problems. He's down at the 39. What a superb ankle tackle by number 59, M.L. Johnson. And if he gets by Johnson, he has the chance to pick up the first down. Watch it on the replay. 
He had a pair of blockers out in front of him, Fred Bush and Rick Bayless, but Johnson gets by Bush, and that sets up the tackle. Big play coming up for the Hawkeyes. Third down and about four. Bayless, they need to get the first down. Bayless will come out. Helverson will come out. Kerry Burke comes wide to the left. Apple is wide right. Deuce backfield. No draw play. Over the middle. Incomplete. No pass interference. Oh, it was close. Fred Heppel had the play smelled out. He felt that he was going to turn it up over the middle, and Heppel was right there. Heppel and the ball arrived almost at the same time. Some would say Heppel might have uh, knocked on the door early. It looked to me like Heppel might have got there a split second ahead of time. Heppel, who already has two interceptions on the night, is having a big night defensively. Sides back deep. Kostrabala almost has his punt blocked by Kofensis. Sides will back up to the 10 and look for some room, and he breaks the tackle, breaks another one out to the 20. 48-yard punt. This is Iowa football. We'll return after these words from your local Total offense tonight so far for the University of Hawaii, 241 yards compared to Iowa's 165 yards, and uh, neither team has done much in the way of rushing. Iowa only 61 yards on the ground. The U of H, 79. Ralph Cherry sends a man in motion. That is Kyle Mosley. And the give will be to the first back through. That is Santiago. And Santiago is out over the 25 and picking up good yardage on a first down. Larry Station wrapped him up. Now, Santiago has not played a lot for the Warriors this year. Only 23 carries coming into tonight. He is a junior out of Oahu. Station is always near the football. An ideal linebacker, and he's got a whole year left for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Cherry, play action. No, he wants to give it to Fletcher, and he probably wishes he hadn't. At least Fletcher does. Fletcher wrapped up at the line of scrimmage by George Little. I think George came to play tonight and show a few folks, and there are some pro scouts down here taking a look at both teams, and I think George would like to play some pro bowl next season. I think the pro scouts just wanted a trip to Hawaii. I was about to say, I can I can hear that conversation. Well, listen, boss, there's a great game over in Hawaii. I think I should cover it. But how about Auburn, Alabama? <laughs> no, I think this Hawaii-Iowa game has got a lot of possibilities. Well, the third quarter is just about expired. We've got a minute 30 left, and nothing has happened as far as offense is concerned, putting any points on the board, so it, it, it may boil down to... Who comes through in that fourth quarter? Cherry Rowley got a man. Aguilar dropped the football. Aguilar had the ball in the first down at the 38. Couldn't make connections. The closest man to him, Keith Hunter. But Aguilar should have hung on. I think Aguilar might have heard, heard footsteps. Definitely a break for the Hawkeyes as they came with both linebackers. Davis from the left, and here's Station coming in. If he had a caught that, he had some yardage perhaps to pick up for a big game. Of course, it all looks so easy from up here. Back to punt is McCarthy. Apple and Robert Smith are back there. The up man is Mike Stoops. Iowa, not much of a rush. Pretty good looking punt. It comes down to Apple and he'll take the fair catch at the 34 yard line. A 41 yard punt that time for Tom McCarthy. Billy gave that an ex ex extra tight squeeze on that one. 6-3 our score will return after these words from your Saturday local. evening in Hawaii. Our score, it is Iowa trailing the rainbow 6-3. We'll check those passing statistics for you after this play. Chuck Long getting his offense together. Running out of the I formation. Good play action, but look at Mr. Long. He'll throw it down, or will they call intentional grounding? I believe not. There was a man in the vicinity, that being Jonathan Hayes. Right now, looking at the passing stats, Long right now with that one, 10 for 18, one interception for 104 yards, and Cherry, 12 for 25, one interception and 136 yards, and Long doing everything he can to get away from the uh, pass rush, dumped it off. Hayes was out there, but uh, perhaps questionable. That is Colin Scotts, and he comes from Australia, where he was one of the top rugby players in that country, and he was recruited, and he's just learning football and as he progresses, he's a sophomore now, he is becoming a real good one. When he learns, it's going to be scary. Straight up the middle goes Iowa, but they go 
not too far as Al Nanga, one of the defensive tackles for Dick Toomey, makes the stop. I think the Hawkeyes are ready for something exotic. They need something to loosen up these rainbows, something out of the trick playbook. Now they're faced with a third and long situation again, and they have 45 seconds remaining in the third quarter. I'm sure that the Rainbows really could care less if they score only six points and win this football game because it would be the first time they have beat a big-time school from the mainland. Third and nine, a lot of stunning for the Rainbows. Back goes Chuck Long. Look out. That's a big play, man. Alvis Satelli, the senior playing in his final game. He is from Oahu, and he came into this game very emotional. Al Nanga also in the vicinity. As you will see, Long is basically alone back there. The problem with Satelli is his, his fantastic quickness. And he has that quick two steps to the outside and then cuts in. It was Herb Wester who got beat on that play for Iowa. I don't know if it was his direct assignment to take that man. But we have the third quarter history. And the score is as it was after the intermission. 6-3 our score. The Rainbows lead the Hawkeyes. We'll return after these words for Stravala, who gets the punt off in good time, and he's got good hang time on it. Vincent Sides back to his 25. A little low, but not much. He'll go down there. Craig Clark. Craig Clark made the stop. Let's Here's how the numbers stack up after three quarters. Let's take a look at those third quarter stats. Hawaii with 15 first downs to the Hawkeyes, 10. The big difference in the ballgame right now is the passing yardage for the Rainbows, 162 to 104. That gives them 246 in total yardage for the Hawks, 158. The penalties, no real big difference there in the turnovers. The Rainbows with one of the Hawkeyes, two. And time of possession just about even. And we're at 6-3 as we just get started here in the fourth quarter. That was a pretty good third quarter for the University of Hawaii from their standpoint. They hung tough, and they showed the, an ability to move the football a little bit. In motion is Nobles to the right. Paola was the lone setback, and now Cherry is under duress, but he'll get rid of it, and he's getting ready on the sidelines. And that is down inside the 42. Check it. That is Nobles, the man who went in motion. And Nobles has the first down times three. George Davis, 25-yard gain. Well, times two and a half. George Davis brought him down along the sideline. Nobles runs a lot like Mr. Murray. Once they get in the open field, they can let loose. Mike Stoops will step up, and he just got beat on the play, and that picks up the big gain and stopped by Hunter. And he's joined in there by Davis and Devon Mitchell. Nobles isn't quite as fast as Murray, but he may be better at turning on the Jets after he catches the football. Terry with some problems with the snap. Iowa may have this football. Iowa may have this football. Jack, you just don't see that happen very often. No, that's been one of uh, Hawaii's strong points this season is uh, the lack of turnovers. And now they've had a couple here in the second half. And uh, both times they've been moving the football. And you have to wonder if, uh, if they can afford to give a good team like the University of Iowa a chance like this. You saw the misconnection there. Richard Pryor, the freshman, who's going to be a great one for Iowa. Willie Kalikau is down on the field. It's Pryor with the fumble recovery. This is about the fifth or sixth time this evening the play has been stopped due to an injury, but Kalakau is walking off under his own power. That's the trainer. They do things a little different here in Hawaii. All the trainers in the Midwest kind of look what like What would males. you do if a pretty girl came up to, me, up to you and said, you're not hurt, are you? <laughs> are you going to die? I'm hurt. No, you're not. You're going to jump up on your feet and say, I'm fine. So you appeal to the macho side of these football players. There you have it. A little different Hawaiian philosophy. I think I would have stayed down and asked for first aid, Jack. <laughs> 14 minutes and 21 seconds. That's how much time Iowa has left to do something about this three-point deficit. They don't want to leave the island 6-5-1. and one. Long back over the middle. He's got Jonathan Hayes out over the midfield stripe. And it looks like he's got the first down. James Elias, who left the ball game earlier, hobbled a bit, is back in the lineup and stopped. Jonathan Hayes. This is really Iowa's chance to get back into this game. They're at midfield. They've got good field position. They don't have to drive the length of the field, but they need a score right here, and uh, that could have a telling effect on the rainbow confidence at this point. 
Speaking of confidence, Chuck Long has plenty of that. Over the right side goes Rick Bayless, and Bayless will pick up about three yards. Fred Bush leading the blocking. And Colin Scotts from Sydney, Australia made the stop. This, this roster of Hawaii looks kind of like a culture smorgasbord. You have people from American Samoa, from Australia, from New Zealand, Alaska. They come from everywhere. Not only for the beautiful weather, but now, thanks to Dick Tomey, for the football program as well. First and 10, Iowa, back to pass, under pressure. Hayes has got the football. He'll try to get outside, but it'll be banged down at the 38. James Elias brought him down, and let's go down to Gary Dolphin. Gary? Well, Jim, Richard Fryer recovering that fumble is just an example of what Hayden Fry is starting to do. He's starting to get some new fresh troops in there as we get into the waning moments of this game. Now in at right guard is Tom Humphrey as uh, Kelly O'Brien has checked out. He's not injured. Hayden just starting to put uh, some fresh people in there right now. Humphrey from Amityville, New York. A junior standing 6'3 and 258 in that offensive line. First back through. Fred Bush breaks a tackle, gets a hard earned one yard. Jack Sims, whose brother plays in the secondary on occasion, made that stop. How many colleges are there in just this island? Well, let's see. Brigham Young uh, has an extension here, a university, and uh, let's see, you got four. Chaminade, University of Hawaii, Hawaii Pacific, Hawaii Loa. Only one that plays football, though. And if you don't remember Shamana, check your college basketball scores. Here's the give. Big hole. Iowa's got the first down and more. Rick Bayless on the quick hitter. Miano had to bring him down in the secondary. And Rick Bayless has shown that he can carry the football here. You tonight. have to like how Rick, Rick runs. He steps up, finds that hole, puts his head down, puts a good grasp on the ball, and he runs hard. And I do not think we're going to see Owen Gill back in this ballgame tonight. A gain of 12. For Rick Bayless and good blocking on the left side of that line by the Iowa front wall and Iowa is now within field goal range for Tom Nickel right on the outskirts of it. Long is looking for Smith. He's got the football. He's out of bounds at the 10. Now they are definitely within field goal range, but they're not thinking that right now. They're thinking six. Pretty play, pretty play long on the sprint out right with good protection. He's looking all the way to Robert Smith, who just goes down about 12 and out and takes it in for the first down. And the Hawkeyes are knocking at the door at the nine yard line. A lot of cushion there once again. Eddie Polite checks into the ball game now at fullback. Is he a polite runner? I was about to say that too, a name that doesn't befit the sport, although he really is a polite young man. Out of the wing tee, they send Polite in motion to the left. The give will be to Bayless. He picks up a block by Polite, bangs his way inside the five and down to the three-yard line. Thad Jefferson had to bring him down, and now Iowa is in good shape with 11.39 remaining in this ball game to take the lead. Okay, this was Dick Tomey's worst fear that that offensive line of Iowa would start to exert their physical dominance. And his fear was that if Iowa could move the football on the ground, that the Rainbows would be in big trouble. This has happened before to Hawaii, as we mentioned before in this telecast. In the fourth quarter against the big schools such as Oklahoma and Nebraska, they have faltered. Polite, in motion, long, in the backfield. Jonathan, he's touchdown. fans are having the best time well since yesterday that's the first time the Hawk fans have really had a chance to let go in a pretty fake into the line and Hayes wide open out there for the easy six Hawaii gambling on defense and they got burned Jonathan Hayes with his fourth touchdown catch of 1984 and you have to wonder will he stay or will he go in 85 if he and Chuck Long come back you only have two offensive starters from this team leaving Tom Nickel will attempt the point after. He has missed two on the year. This one is not in that category. 33 of 35 on the year for Nickel. Iowa is in front. 10-6. This is the Hawkeye back deep. It is Marcel Williams for the Hawaii Rainbows who trail for the first time this evening. That drive started with a turnover. That has really hurt the Rainbows in this game because they were moving the ball effectively twice when turnovers killed them. 
The kick is deep, and Williams will probably settle for 20 yards, and he does. Chuck Long is now 14 of 22 on the night with one interception, 137 yards, and more importantly, that one touchdown pass to a wide open Jonathan Hayes. Here it is again. Hayes standing up as all Iowa tight ends have done since Hayden Fry arrived. An all-out blitz. And an all-out touchdown pass. Those may be some of the hardest passes to catch in the game when you're wide open and no one's around you. Ralph Cherry trailing goes back to pass. He's looking for Murray and now he'll run it up to the 20, five, six, seven yard line he goes as Keith Hunter brought him down there. There, there is something we haven't seen a lot tonight of, and that is the scramble. Iowa has contained this KG quarterback from Hawaii pretty well. Now as the University of Hawaii looks to open up the passing lanes and spread out the field, this may give Cherry the opportunity to run some more. This guy changes gears like a fine sports car, doesn't he? He was running left that time and then I guarantee See, that he's going to look to run the remainder of this game. Eight yard gain for Rafael Cherry. Second and two for Hawaii. Back to pass. He picks up a block. Got a man open. That's Paola to the 35. Will he go down? Eventually at the 37 yard line. Let's go down to the sidelines where Gary Dolphin is standing by. Well, Jim, as you guys mentioned, Iowa fans have had little to cheer about uh, until this last touchdown. Of course, the defense has played well tonight. There are estimates of anywhere from 3,500 to 5,000 here uh, who have made the trip over from the mainland. And although they haven't done a lot of cheering tonight, that is not to say they haven't had a wild time this week on Oahu. In fact, a little while ago, Leo one year came up to me and said he eloped with his girlfriend, Shirley Sharp of Dubuque, and they got married last night. They want their friends to know about it. Well, Gary, you know that's how Dubuque people are. 9.54 right now. Cherry to the sidelines. Incomplete to Murray. Iowa's done a good job at taking Walter Murray out of this game. Walter Murray has not been a factor throughout this entire football game. They have had a history of taking that flashy wide receiver out of the football game. Now that formation, four wide receivers lined up all in a row. Ralph Cherry has looked over that way once. The other two times, he's thrown to the other side. He's got a man open. That is Coldine Walsh. Walsh has the football, breaks a tackle, but won't go very far. He's out to the 38-yard line. George Davis with a nice stop on that play, and ooh, he hung on for a good one because he could have gotten outside and picked up some big yardage. That is the first time we have seen Coldine Walsh tonight. He was returning punts for this ball club. He pulled a hamstring, and this is his first action in a while. He's another one of those guys that you, get, you want to get him out in the open field and let him uh, show his moves and show his speed. Third down and eight, Hawaii, with a very crucial third down situation. And Ralph Cherry will hope for some protection. He gets it over the middle of the road. Almost picked off by George Davis. Almost picked off by Davis. I think it was intended for Aguiar. Nice play by Davis that time. The Hawkeyes went for their nickel defense as they added an extra D back. Cherry looking over the middle, and Davis all but had this one in and out of his hands. Aguiar was the man coming across on the post pattern. The snap, the kick by McCarthy. It's going to be well covered. Fair catch called for by Robert Smith, who makes sure. A 40-yard punt by McCarthy in Iowa has the football and the lead. 10-6 is our score. We'll return after these words to all the stations along our Hawkeye television network, including WQAD-TV in Moline, KGA-TV in Cedar Rapids and Waterloo, KDUB-TV in Dubuque, KCAU-TV in Sioux City, along with KCCI-TV in Des Moines, KAAL-TV in Austin and Mason City, and KTVO-TV in Kirksville and the Tumwa. Second half drives, Hawaii has punted three times and had two turnovers. In the backfield for the Iowa Hawkeyes, Rick Bayless and Fred Bush. Bush, the up back, Long wants to throw. He wants to go long for Robert Smith. Now he'll tuck it in and try to run. Good decision up across the 30-yard line. Robert Smith looked like he had his man beat down the right side. Anthony Woodson made the stop. I was watching Smith, Jack, go down the sideline, and at that time, Chuck Long decided to play it safe. I'm sure Hayden Fry was very happy with the decision Chuck Long made. 
he'll take the eight yards right now. It's almost more valuable if Iowa can move down the field and run some time off the clock. Mm, nice block by Jonathan Definitely Hayes. Definitely with, with that clock rolling, 8.22 right now. I think uh, a very wise decision by Chuck there. Give us to the second back through. Bayless is going to hell. He's out over the 40 to 44 yard line of Rick Bayless. When he gets old and gray, he'll be telling his grandchildren about one particular night in Hawaii. Owen who? Owen Gill has not played in the second half. Sam Moku made the stop. Gain of 13 for Rick Bayless, who hails from Hugo, Minnesota, only a freshman. Chuck Long. Over 6,600 yards passing this time. They'll stay on the ground and get very little, but they will get some more time taken off that clock. 7.50 and counting. Bayless limping a bit. There's still a lot of time left in this ball game, but the University of Hawaii really at this time needs to stem the tie because Iowa is showing now that they can move the football. Down to the sidelines and Gary Dolphin. Gary? Well, Jim, it's very apparent the offensive line of the Hawkeyes really starting to wear down that front wall of Hawaii. But back to that Iowa defense, how well have they played? Hawaii has averaged 26 points a game during their seven-game win. That'll tell you something. Hawaii in danger of having that seven-game winning streak go by the boards. Long will dump it off to Jonathan Hayes. First down out inside the 45-yard line of Hawaii. Colin Scott's had to break up big tight end down. Chuck paid the price on that one, too. He got hit pretty hard after he let go to Jonathan Hayes, and Hayden ran out to check, make sure Chuck was all right. A gain of 11, and I'm telling you, every time Chuck Long hooks up with Jonathan Hayes, or even attempts to, it would appear that something good happens, and I'm not just talking about the 12th game of the season. It was Chuck Long to Jonathan Hayes against Michigan State that made it 17-16 before the controversial two-point conversion try. First and 10, Iowa. 6.59 remaining. The call goes to the second back through. Who was, got maybe one. That was Marshall, Bush. Marshall Cotton that time. Marshall Cotton into the ball game. I thought it was Fred Bush, but apparently Bush was out front blocking. I think, I think you're right, Coach. Yeah. Was Fred? Yeah. Well, it wasn't a Cotton Bush. We know that. Marshall Cotton, only a freshman. Scott Helverson goes wide to the left. The give is to Rick Bayless. He's got a blocker right in front of him, and down he goes the hard way after picking up about five. Nice tackle by Kurt Capensis. Ryan Norwood also in the vicinity. This is a major league hit. Fred Bush has been leading the charge all night long. There's a good block right there. And that's a great tackle. You'll feel that one for the next day or two, I guarantee it. Defensive backs have to be some of the more talented athletes in all the sport. They have to do everything well. They have to be able to jump, run, tackle, give us to the second back through again. And this time, no go for Iowa. Well, Bayless is getting his battle scars tonight. Brian Norwood made the stop. It was Norwood early in the ball game who said aloha to Robert Smith on the first pass play of the night and sent Smith out for a couple of plays. It looked like we had an injured player, but now everybody seems to be all right, although Norwood limping just a little. And now we're going to bring out the chains. This is close to the first down. I, I'd have to say he has it. Chuck Long was having a tough night passing, but... Uh, now after a good third and early fourth quarter, he is up to 15 out of 23 with one interception for 148 yards and one touchdown. Well, I said I thought he had it. I was wrong. He was short. Fourth down in inches. What will Iowa do? Well, if you can get that first down, you can run a couple more minutes off the clock. And if you take a three-point play here, it would be 13 to 6, and that still gives Hawaii a lot of time to come back. All they need is at six points and that one point conversion for a tie or, the, or Iowa would be putting themselves in a position to get beat on a two point conversion. So Iowa will stick it on the ground. They're at the 33 yard line of Hawaii. If Chuck Long popped up and threw a pass to Jonathan Hayes, Hawaii would 
drop his helmet. Give us the Bush first down. Double tight end, power, power eye formation. That's just power football, nothing fancy there. We really haven't seen a lot of Fred Bush in 1984, Pete, because of the injury problem, banged up a foot against Iowa State and then had a lot of problems getting healthy. And then when he was back in the lineup and healthy, of course, Owen Gill and Ronnie Harmon were in the backfield, so he couldn't get back in, but he is making the most of his opportunity. We've got a fallen warrior on the field. Iowa leads it. 10 us you are enjoying an Iowa comeback. They trailed 6-3 going into the fourth quarter, but a touchdown pass from Chuck Long to Jonathan Hayes from in close. Take a look at some of those numbers, and the uh, Hawkeyes right now rushing have gotten 113 yards. 55 of those have come from Rick Bayless on 10 carries. 148 yards passing, 261 total for the Hawkeyes, while the Rainbows, 92 on the ground, 198 through the year that gives him 290 total yards and 10 carries for Rick Bayless 55 yards that's a pleasant pleasant note for the Hawkeyes and it looks like as we have mentioned earlier that that Iowa offensive line is wearing out Hawaii Chuck Long on a first and 10 pitch to Rick Bayless Bayless has got a block he's got some room will he get outside not so 25 yard line he still picked up five Kurt Kofensis wrapped him up more importantly, the clock continues to tick away. We're under five minutes now, 4.53 and counting. Bayless, another gutsy run right here as he picks up about five on the run. You may have seen earlier in that play Rich Miano flying over now. You're gonna see Hawaii do a little bit of gambling on defense. They need a turnover here, something to stem this Iowa tie. Iowa put a drive together after a Ralph Cherry fumble on the snap went down and scored and now they're trying to put another long drive together and put the rainbows away. Rick Bayless will get the call again and he's got plenty. First and 10 Iowa and Bayless now at about 70 yards and Scott Elverson mixing it up with Norwood in the backfield away from the play. Al Nanga made the stop for Hawaii. This is just a nice opening. Nice bit of running and Bayless he just ducks into those holes. He's a crafty little runner only six feet 200 pounds. And there are a lot of coaches that just won't play a freshman unless he has to. And that seems to be the situation tonight. Bayless coming in, as we said, had only 10 carries. But when you've got a Ronnie Harmon and an Owen Gill back there, Bayless is just going to set and learn the system. But now he is forced into action. And the Hawks are glad about it. Guess who? Bayless. Guess where? 10-yard line. And Iowa now in great shape wrapping up this football game. Everett Wade, the linebacker from Gardena, California, made the stop. And... More importantly, what this drive has done, gentlemen, is take the air out of these fans. They're just kind of back in their seats going, well, here we go again, just like Oklahoma last year in the last game of the season in Nebraska. Well, it has a defense on their heels, too, and that, that has to be a tired bunch out there over the last, uh, oh, the last half of the third quarter and the uh, all of the fourth quarter. They've been on the field a long time. Well, if you thought Hawaii was just a school who played in the islands and didn't play football, forget it, Bayless over left tackle tucks it inside for just a couple of yards on that second down and five carry. So it'll be about third and three for the Iowa Hawkeyes. It seems reminiscent. I saw the Illinois game when Iowa played Illinois. It's at this point it's almost keep away. And they're doing it very effectively. Since Hawaii Hayden, cannot score if they don't have the football. And Hayden Fry started this year by saying he'd rather have the big play offense than the control offense. But now with his big guns out of there Let's see what Chuck Long does. Deuce backfield with Bush and Bayless. Long's looking over the middle for Smith. Does he have him? No, that looks like pass interference. Nothing called. They say both men going after the football, and I'd like to see that one again. I think you might have a case for pass interference here if we have it on the replay. Watch Take it. a look. I think that's Brian Norwood. Well, well that's, that's uh, not the play. That was Ray Bayless before. on the play preceding it. But if we see it, it looked to me like Norwood bumped Smith on the crossing pattern. Chuck Long was looking for Robert Smith the entire way. That, that was reminiscent of the touchdown play, except sending the tight end over in the corner. That time they sent the wide receiver over the middle. Fourth down and three for Iowa. That, that's a crucial non-call for the Hawkeyes. I think that goes without saying. And Interesting here. They're going to keep the football. They will not go for the field goal. 
Let's see what Chuck Long does. Option, he looks right. He's going to roll with the football. Everyone's covered. Over the middle, threw it away. He threw it over Hayes and into Everson's hands. I thought he was throwing it away over Jonathan Hayes, and Everson came back and got the football. Iowa has just about wrapped it up. I tell you what, Halverson was well covered on the play by Brian Norwood. And Long just did an outstanding job of laying up the ball. Now you'll see Jonathan Hayes coming to your pitcher right there. And I thought that's who he was throwing it to. But he threw it to the back of the end zone and Halverson came back in and made the catch. Halverson's third touchdown of the season. I don't think he'll have a bigger one in his career than that one right there. Well, Chuck Long apparently knew that Halverson was going to cut back in for the football or else Elverson made the cut at the exact moment the ball was gone, but now Tom Nickel with the point after attempt. It is up, it is through, and Iowa leads the ball game 17-6, Hawkeyes. We'll be back after these words from your... back to the Hawkeye Television Network. Dick Tomey, knowing they need some points in a hurry, has put William Bell back on the goal line to receive this kick from Tom Nickel. We're going to look at that replay again. There is some question, at least along the Hawaii sidelines, that Helverson was out of bounds when he came back in and got it. This kick will just step inside the goal, the back line. So Iowa gets a break there as Nickel makes an excellent kick, and we'll take a look at the replay. Let's see if Helverson is out of bounds. I don't know from this angle, Jack. This isn't a good angle to be able to see if he stepped on the back line or over the back line before he caught the ball. There's Hayes, and it looks like for all the world like he's going to Hayes, but all along, long there he is out of bounds. He's out of bounds. He had stepped out of bounds and came back inbound. Helverson was out of bounds. Let's take a look at that scoring drive for the Iowa Hawkeyes. 79 yards, time 627. 14 plays in all, and Helverson on what will go in the books as a touchdown pass. You can't step out of bounds and come back in. Ralph Terry now going for broke. He'll go to Nobles, who's got the football, and he is hit out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Whew. Craig Hartman took him out of, out of bounds, play right there, and uh, he's a senior out of Cedar Rapids, Jefferson. Uh, now let's take a look at it again. Helverson coming into your screen right there. He's out of he's bounds. He's out of bounds. He's and out he, of bounds. And he's also right in front of the official. The official is right there. And he's got to make that call. I didn't see Helverson in the end zone. He was so far to the side. And that's why I thought that Long was throwing it away. Cherry over the middle. Oh, nice catch. Nice catch by the big tight end, Killen. That'll be pass interference on Iowa. Stoops hit him before he got the football. Well, Iowa got a break. Maybe, maybe it all evens out in the end. I don't know. They, they thought, Iowa fans thought that Chuck Long was in the end zone on the two-point conversion against Michigan State, and they thought they had that football game taken away from them. That was really so close. All I can say about that particular play against Michigan State is that I'm glad I do not officiate for a living because that was a very tough call. And the problem that Hayden Fry had with the Jack Wears was the fact that they just took so long in making up their minds as to whether or not he was in. But Helverson on that touchdown pass, and as Jack Weirs pointed out, he was out of bounds, and he was one foot away from the official. Now, whether the official was watching their upper bodies to see if there was any contact and any interference, they're going to have to move the It is six possible. Out. Maybe he was forced out of That's bounds, right. too. That, was, that could also be the situation, in which case you've got to have a call. Cherry back to pass. Cherry lets it rip. Oh, almost intercepted by Iowa. The intended receiver was killing the tight end. Let's let's see it one more time. It's very hard to tell if, in fact, Helverson is bumped on this play because by the time he comes into our picture, he's already coming back. Now both, it does, both men are out of bounds at this point. That's Norwood, the defender. Well, that's, that's the expanded end zone over here in Hawaii. I guess in Hawaii that that can classify as an exotic. 
Iowa will win this football game unless the roof falls in here, and there is no roof. Ralph Cherry wants it all, but he'll have to settle for something else. He dunks it off. Intended receiver, at least the closest one nearby, was Joe Nobles, but the rush made Cherry throw it away. Well, I think Hayden Fry has to be giving a little sigh of relief now, and he had to be a worried man at halftime. After this ball game, if time permits, we will go down to the sidelines and Gary Dolphin to see if we can wrap up any of the Iowa Hawkeyes and send them home to you. Ralph Cherry straight back, looking for a miracle. Down he goes, and it is Santiago. Make that easy on with a football and out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Now, they may mark him back at the 29, but a good throw by Cherry, who laid it in. That to David Aguiar. That's your basic 30-yard down and out. And that's a ball that not a lot of quarterbacks can throw, but Ralph Cherry can. That one's going to come back holding on the rainbows on that one, so the big play negated. Flag way back in the backfield, away from the action, and you'll see a 28-yard pass play from Ralph Cherry to Aguiar wiped out. Willie yeah, Kalakau called for the hold. Just laid it right over the defender in double coverage, and... Craig Harton wrapped him up and out of bounds, but Hawaii has seen their seven-game winning streak come to a slow and painful death there against Iowa. Let's go down to the field where Gary Dolphin is standing by. Gary? Well, Jim, a couple of things. Uh, not only, regardless of whether Halverson was out of bounds on that last uh, touchdown, the Hawkeyes have really wore down that Hawaii front the second half, and they've been doing it with a two tight end offense. They've been shuffling in Mike Flagg and Craig Clark at the left side. Jonathan Hayes at the right. They've been sealing the blocks inside. That's given Bayless great room to run and, of course, resulted in the touchdown pass. That was the 16th touchdown pass of the year for Chuck Long. So Ralph Terry with third and forever, third and 20 in the pocket. Over the middle he goes. He's trying for killing, but he overthrows it. I think the key play in this game was uh, Devon Mitchell's interception in the end zone. It really was because Hawaii was driving and Terry threw a pretty good pass. It was a better defensive play than it was a worse offensive play. So Cherry will not go out with a win in his last game for Hawaii. There you see the situation that the Rainbows face. Well, these two clubs saved all the excitement for the fourth quarter as far as putting things on the board. Well, that's been typical of Hawaii all year long. This time, however, the other team had most of the fourth quarter offensive fireworks. We've got a timeout on the field. Devon Mitchell has done that act before, Jack Weirs. Against, against Michigan, he picked one off at the goal line and ran back about 60 or 70 yards to thwart the only Michigan scoring drive of the day. Iowa leads it with a short time left. This is the their seventh win of the year, and if it holds up, and it looks like it will, the Hawkeyes will go into Anaheim, and it looks like we haven't got official word up here but it looks like Texas will be their opponent. And the game time for you back in Iowa is 7 o'clock your time on December 26th in the land of Mickey Mouse, Anaheim, California. There's nothing Mickey Mouse about Texas, I'll tell you that. Even though they got beat today, there's nothing Mickey Mouse about Texas. Those old boys know and love to play football. When you look at a game like Texas and Texas A&M, you can't really judge it because once you get those interstate rivalries going, you can throw those records out the door. Cherry on a fourth and 20. Maybe his last attempt of his career. Down it goes, and it is knocked away by Stoops. Stoops took it away from Aguiar. It would have been a first down. They had the distance, but it would appear that Rafael Cherry has thrown his last pass as a rainbow. The Iowa fans celebrate. This place will be up for grabs tonight in Hawaii. Here it is again. Here's the touchdown from Chuck Long that sealed this win to Scott Helverson. If you're just joining us, watch where Helverson comes into your picture. Right there. He's out of bounds. You have to believe that the, he got forced out with that official standing right in front of him. Now, I'm not sure of the call. If you're forced out of bounds, I assume you can come back into play. But I, I still would think if he is forced out of bounds with the ball in the air, obviously, if he's hit, that's a pass interference call. Here's Rick Bayless running up the middle like he has all night. Spins away and down to the 20, and Bayless is closing in 
on the 100 yard mark. He may have about 80 or 90 right now. I think the Hawkeyes have made a find in this game. 13 yard carry for Bayless. And he has 88 yards on the evening with 14 carries. Well, again, we'll have to check the status of Owen Gill for you after the game if we can get Gary Dolphin to talk to someone in the know, if in fact they know themselves. But Owen Gill has not appeared in the second half. But Rick Bayless certainly has been on the field. Give Bayless. Tucks it in, picks up two, three, breaks away, gets down inside the 15. Boy, you got to be impressed by the way he keeps those legs driving. We have not seen a lot of Bayless, obviously, Pete, and this is a surprise to everybody. I'm sure it's not to Rick Bayless, but to most of the folks it is. Not at all, and he was, believe it or not, a walk-on. The uh, Hawkeye staff knew of him and, and told him to come out and walk on and give it a chance, and uh, he's showing what he can do tonight. Why he's not even bothering to call timeout in this situation with less than a minute to go. And I would doubt seriously if Chuck Long would put it up. The game is in the wraps. Bayless is stood up. I believe that was someone else in the back. Kevin field. Harmon. Kevin Harmon came into the ball game. That's the second play for Harmon. If you weren't here in the first half, he threw a half-back option pass, but he threw it to the wrong uniform. Good looking side on the sidelines. Kevin Harmon's brother Ronnie. Made the trip out with the Hawkeyes. He's on crutches, his left leg in the cast, but uh, Ronnie's all smiles right now. Even a cast feels better in Hawaii. Well, how much of this game do you feel is the fact that Iowa might have come in not expecting a big tussle, and it took him a couple of quarters to really get geared up? I don't know. Hayden Fry was talking to his club about how good Hawaii was, but after well, there's a fumble on the snap, but it is recovered by Iowa. And that's the ball game. That's the ball game. This one is history. The Iowa Hawkeyes have ended the drought and they have ended Hawaii's winning streak which was the third longest in the nation at seven in a row and the Hawkeyes will have a good couple of days in Waikiki and the fireworks come out from the stands and the players greet each other there's Dick Tomey and there are some rumors flying around about Tomey and the other coaching jobs but when you're a successful coach I guess that's always the case it cropped up from time to time over the last few years and the latest one uh, has popped up our way is Arizona State. Could be. We'll see if Gary Dolphin will have any interviews for us after this ball game. But the big story of the night in Hawaii, Iowa has beaten the Rainbows 17-6. The final will return after these words from Aloha Stadium where the Iowa Hawkeyes were victorious tonight in their 12th.